imagine being so so hot and just and having endless to sit in a chair. ice water yeah in a in sitting in a booth after being like you getting your ass like beat with a giant metal stick by memes mm. <laughs> That's a sentence. On today's part in my take, we've got a twofer for the people. We have our good friend Kirk Goldsberry. Instant reaction right after game three of the NBA Finals. Uh, so you get the freshest, hottest takes. We recorded it on Wednesday night. And then we have our good friend Danny Woodhead, fresh off of his attempt to uh, make the U.S. Open. He fell a little short, but it was great to catch up with him. And we have the biggest celebrity in the entire world on this show, Henry Lockwood, uh, which we'll get to as well. We're going to talk Game 3. We have those two interviews. We have Fire Fest of the Week. Great show sending you off into the weekend. And we are brought to you, as always, by our friends at Visible, our presenting sponsor. What would you do with the extra money you'd save by switching to Visible? Well, you could pay $60 with some carriers or as little as $25 a month with Visible. With the extra money, you could take someone on a date or maybe just live your single life and buy yourself dinner. Speaking of singles, who was the single most important player or play of the night? Billy. Um, Jason Tatum, once again, did not have a, that good of a game. He, he played pretty well. Very good I, game. I, but I, he's not giving MVP <laughs> performances. Okay, okay. Uh, very good game. But, yeah, go ahead. Um, but Al Horford also was a huge role player and also put up tons of points. Okay. So I think Al Horford's my... All right, tons so of there, points. there are tons of points. I think he had ten. Um, <laughs> the the you meant to say tens of points. The, that's <laughs> yeah, Billy's points. pick for uh, the most important player uh, or play of the night, and we want to hear your single most important player or play from the last game. And we're giving away some PMT signed basketball jerseys to AWLs who tag PMT Invisible on Instagram and Twitter with their submission. Just pick a player, pick a play, tag PMT Invisible on Instagram and Twitter. You could win a free basketball jersey signed by us. So make sure to tag us both for your chance to win and switch to Visible at Visible.com slash pod. Get unlimited single line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Comparison to a single line with unlimited data to other major carriers for plan and network details. See Visible.com slash pod. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Visible. Go to Visible.com slash pod. Get unlimited line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Today is Friday, June 10th. I don't really know how to start it other than saying, Hank, um, how many? Congratulations. Yeah, well, no, more. Actually, the question is, Hank, how many people do you think want your life? I don't know. I mean, it's, it, was a, it was a great night. Probably a lot. Yeah. So uh, to recap... The Celtics win game three, convincingly. It was actually a very, very fun game to watch because you had uh, the Warriors almost, you know, come back, the seven-point possession, all these things happen, and the, the Celtics, who were the better team, win the game. Hank is sitting on the wood. He gets the ball, pump fakes a shot. He does his fist pumps where he actually is is now done a very good job of keeping his right hand Cocked and loaded, but not releasing it. Uh, he had he had one towards the end after the block. Yeah, where, where he he let them both fly. It was, was kind of yeah. He was holding one, and then it was kind of moving a little bit. Um, he was sitting with uh, Guy Fieri. He went to the club with Guy Fieri. Uh, he also sat on Paul Pierce's seventy fifth uh, oh, or did. top seventy five uh, basketball coat. That he, every top 75 player got a special uh, jacket. He sat on it. Oh. Then when Paul Pierce was like, hey, you're sitting on my jacket, he got up and he moved and he sat on Paul Pierce's phone. <laughs> he had an all-time night. <laughs> so I, you just go. Like, this is we'll, – we'll pepper in questions, but it is the Henry Lockwood show to start this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to write down some notes to just, like, to things to go over because there was – so Dana Barrows, random, but Celtic legend – was wearing a Dana Barrows jersey during like the pregame warmups <laughs> and was standing <laughs> like two feet in front of me. Like he was literally like boxing me in. I was just like stuck behind him. Like that was unreal. Celtic legend. Bill Walton, recurring guest. He was there like a row behind us. Did you talk to him? Did you remind him of uh, of the time we interviewed him in Vegas? We didn't we didn't really get to talk to him. We were just kinda like we were we we're a little a little far away from each other, but when the T-shirt. They came out with all of the T-shirt girls and were like throwing T-shirts. He was just standing there and just asking for T-shirts and grabbing them, <laughs> like, but like put it 
grabbed one, like put it down and like put his hand back up and just grabbed one, put it down. Uh, I believe it was his wife had like a sick Celtics Garcia, like Jerry Garcia jersey. Uh, the Paul Pierce thing. I mean, I that that needs to get cleared up a little bit though. Okay, please. He, first of all, he was he was a little uh, he was a little tipsy. Like he was he was. I don't like where like, this is going, Hank. It mm-hmm. sounds like he you're was, blaming Paul for for you almost stealing his stuff. No, and Big Cat Big Cat knows this. Where Dave will like basically just. For the sake of the story, make things up to make it seem like uh, more, I don't think like so. more ridiculous. I didn't sit on the jacket. I, I his he put his jacket like on my seat, and I went to sit in a different place. I was like, "Oh, I can't sit in the jacket." He's like, "No, you definitely can't sit in the jacket." And he had just thrown his phone like on the bench. So when I sat down, he's like, "That's my fucking phone." But he was like, he was like fucking around, and then Dave started laughing, and then he started like, obviously like realized Dave was laughing and like fuck with me, and then he just like kept going. So it was like funny, but like. I didn't sit on his jacket. I, I definitely. You sat on his jacket. You defiled his jacket. Sounds like you tried to steal his phone. Yeah, and his jacket. No, it was great. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I don't even know where to go. You had such a crazy night. Well, let's talk, let's talk about oh. the let's talk about Hezzy Hank. Yeah, when, we'll, when we'll get the to the ball. game. We'll get to the game. We all, we also have breakdown with Kirk Goldsberry. We'll get to the game, but let's let's yeah. So, Hank. so the ball gets deflected to Hezzy Hank, and Hank, I was honestly impressed. I was very impressed. With the fact that you caught it, it almost it almost seemed like you were just ready to shoot. Like you didn't hesitate at all. You were just like, I, "This is what I have to do right now." What went through your head in the moments after you caught the deflection until you did the pump fake? If you look, you can kind of see in real time. Like I looked at the ref and and uh, who was pool, and they weren't looking at me. Like I had the ball and I was kind of ready, like instantly, probably to just throw it back. But I realized like they weren't focused on me in that moment or whatever. So I had like a quick second where I was like, all right. And then I just like. It was very natural. It was so quick. And then I didn't know, like afterwards, I, I was asking Dave, he's like, do you think that was on TV? I was like, I fucking hope so. Like that was hilarious. And then obviously like he texted me, but it was just, I don't even know. Like it just all happened I, very quickly. I jumped out of off my couch. Cause I was like, <laughs> I it's, I was thinking about it this morning. It's so funny because we're blessed with having dream jobs and we get to talk to athletes and we get to be at all these events, but just the simple fact of our boy Hank being on TV and like, I was just like, anytime the action was down on his end, I was just staring at that left corner of my television being like, that's him. I know him. I fucking know him. He just got the ball. I was just super <laughs> impressed that you had the presence of mind. Like most people, they, they catch a ball in the stands and they like start laughing and they smile and they look around. And they're like, oh, I can't believe this happened. And they toss the ball back. It was like instantaneous for you. You were, you were like, you had a plan almost. That's what it looked like. Now, my question to you is, do you think that if you had shot it, would you have made it? I don't know. I was kind of behind the backboard, but I, I mean, I had a clean look. I, I said, so we, when we, we had Kirk on last night, and it's coming up. I said, 0% chance, well, 0% like little, chance. I was like it, the, the art, we were behind the backboard. So like realistically, but like, if I was a little, a couple feet to the right, I also got him with the pump fake. Yeah, you did. You, yeah, you, you did you see his head, like go for it. Yeah. I just said, I, the way I describe it you is put him on skates. You, I've played basketball with you many times and you're not, you're, you're, you're a guy who needs to warm up. That's what I said. You need you need to warm up. Like your first few yeah. shots oh, yeah. miss the rim, and then you can hit like eight <laughs> or nine in a row. So that one would have missed everything. I think I think <laughs> low key Hank would have made it. High key he would have hit an innocent bystander underneath the basket. Well, yeah, we also were like we didn't know if we were going to get kicked out or not. That's what we were trying to decide after. Yeah, no, also, I don't think you would have. That's I, I didn't say that in the beginning, but Guy Fieri, like being with him in the beginning because him and Dave are close. And we didn't know we like we went to meet up with him at his restaurant beforehand, and we just like hung out with him and his sons. And then we didn't know when we got to the garden. They're like, "Oh, you're sitting next to guy." It was like, "Oh, this is hilarious." But so, yeah. And then the Celtics just class organization, like class all around. It was just very like they obviously it's like a great it's it's just a surreal experience. Like obviously from the butter knife days, and all of a sudden we're like in the in the Legends Club, like all these people sitting courtside like it's just very it's it's very surreal from the pit to the palace yeah yeah so you went to you went out to the club with guy the next uh that night right like right yes. after and how was yep. that it was great i mean he's got he's got like his own line of tequila so he was like giving us tequila before he gave us like three bottles of tequila i didn't i didn't take any because we ended up at the club but 
he had, you know, it was just everyone like he gets when we were courtside, we were leaving, like walking on off the court and like everyone, every single person, like Kenny Smith, Nia Long, like every celebrity that's there, like sees guy and it's like, oh, my God, guy, like guy, 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 like obviously being with Dave, it's kind of like that. Like there's that to an extent and like you guys know how it is, but Guy Fieri, it's just like on another level, like every single person, like I was, he was right behind me and Kenny Smith was walking up to me like he knew it was like hey and i was like i like for a second was like what and then i turned around i was like oh he's, he's going for guy <laughs> you're, you're like man this heater is incredible yeah. Kenny Smith. well no i was just like yeah Huge but it was fan, so he Hank. was so like he was so like you're my best friend then i was like this isn't for me i was like but i turned around and he was just like oh it's, it's for guy okay yeah. so so a segue to talking about the game is one last question about this night do you think one will there be a game six and two do you think you'd get the invite? I do think there will be a game six, unfortunately. Very scared about game four. And I do think I would get the invite. Wow. So you could be in there for a potential clinching game if the Celtics win one of the next two. That would be correct. I'm not I mean, I guess I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to knock on wood, but Okay, so let's talk about the game. I mean, we, I think PFT and I are kind of in the same boat where it's like, I think the Celtics are just better. I, you know, at this point, the Warriors, um, I, I don't know what they can do other than like everyone's got to make their shots because the Celtics, they just, the Celtics just tried so much harder. And, and it might not be like, the, that's not saying they're not talented because they ob- obviously are, but they went for every 50 50 ball, they out rebounded. They were like flying around, cutting harder, everything. Like it just, it felt like the Celtics were like, we have to win this game, and the Warriors didn't have that same sense of urgency. Yeah, the Celtics, like what they have, you know, gotten better at over the season, but that happened a lot in the beginning of the season. They still do it to an extent. It happened in the third quarter. Is they just will just let down and all of a sudden have terrible runs like that. That seven, that seven point possession when you got the and one on the three and the flagrant. Like, that's the only thing, but they obviously came back in the fourth quarter kind of like game one where they just came out in the fourth quarter and just asserted dominance. They did in the first quarter too, but they just let – that third quarter when they let them down, like it was – it just gets so scary all over again when they all of a sudden are up 15 and then down two. Yeah. yeah. I, I do feel like the Warriors – like, yes, they obviously have to make their shots if they want to win, but the Warriors are a team that can beat a team that's like, you know, better all around than them, and they can beat them easily too. As long as you just have, you know, Steph – Clay, if those two guys make all their shots, if they get to a night where they're both on, then they're pretty much impossible to beat. It, it doesn't but, matter how good the Celtics can play, but they sneaky were though. But but they no they, yeah when they Steph when Steph's not playing time, yeah. when Steph's not on the court, it's like very you can tell like their offense just doesn't like have yeah, the, any. Rhythm. I don't think that Clay was like on on though last night. Oh, he, he, he was, was, was on. He was pretty he close was on because remember he didn't score in the first. Qu- I don't think he scored in the first quarter or the fourth quarter. So he had twenty five points in two. Right, quarters. That, that's what I'm saying. Like they they didn't have a combination. He was game going off though. Of them, yeah, of them both being just good from start to finish. And when they do, I don't think that you can beat them. But they're not going to be able to do that. Like that's not. It's impossible for them to sustain that type of basketball. So I, I also think we talked about it with Kirk later, but I think Celtics in six. Um, Hank, do you have do you have anybody that you'd like to apologize? Any children that might have been at the game yes, that you dropped f bombs in front of? Because Hank, real classy, real classy last night. Clay Thompson reported, and this is egregious if true, that there were fans that were dropping f bombs at the game. Mm. It was not a factor. We played in front of rude people before, dropping f bombs with children in the crowd. Real classy. Good job, Boston. Is that true? I hope that not. is very true. Multiple times throughout the game, I was definitely participating. He <gasps> what observation from the wood? He just classy. does. He from start to finish does not stop talking, talking to the refs, like talking shit. The entire game. Wait, Clay yeah. Thompson? No, Dray- Draymond. 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 Yeah, yeah, Clay Thompson was the one that... Clay didn't say a word, I don't think. That, that, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, Clay was the one that called you out on it, though. Did you say anything yeah, to I mean, Clay? That... No, I didn't say anything to Clay. Uh, I. It's crazy. I, it's so soft. It is so soft. It's... So... And obviously the series could still... I, I'm, I'm convinced now the Celtics are just the better team. The only the only team that can beat the Celtics is the Celtics. Like, they have to beat themselves. And it's kind of sad watching the Warriors 
go out a little bit like this where they're complaining. They're and there's been complaining on the Celtics side too, so it's not like you know. But but the way the fact they're complaining about uh, the F word is insane. Like being like real classy. That's you immediately lose the argument when you say stay classy. And then and all he does is talk. Like it's not like it's just coming out of nowhere. That it's like much different when it's like he's actively talking shit, and so Celtics fans are talking shit back. Yeah, and now Draymond didn't complain that way. His wife did. Clay did. Draymond, I don't think, said, like, hey, this was bad. Because I think Draymond gen- genuinely, like, it's loves. kind of cool. Yeah, he loves the attention. He loves being yeah. a heel. He just sucks. He sucked at basketball in game three. But what I was saying is, like, it's it's weird watching the Warriors. They're, they are the embodiment of, like, an a, a, a great athlete that can still do the same things, but not in exactly the same way where it's, like, they have those runs where they'll cut it to four or cut it to five, and then they couldn't get over the hump. They like couldn't. The Celtics had an answer for them. Where old school Warriors, they would have those runs, and then the game would be over. They'd be like, "Oh, here's here's a 15-0 run in like two minutes. Nothing you can do about it. Game over." They have those little spurts where you're like, "That's the Warriors," and then they're human again. So it's kind of weird just- watching them. Yeah. They need their role players if they're going to win games. They don't like, have it's, any. It, yeah. Like Steph, I mean, because Steph and Clay are the only ones that can score. But if they just d them up, like it's, I th- I think they should win. It might be Celtics in five, but who knows? Whoa. We just need Scott Foster every game. Whoa! So Scott Foster is actually not undefeated when he refs for the Celtics. We get into this with Kirk. Yeah, a little bit got. later. We got got by a fake stat. Yeah. For real? Yeah, yeah it's a fake stat. So we we all now have to. I become, feel like I've seen that. I've seen that trickulating for weeks. Because one person makes it up and then, like, finding What's the out, actual stat? I don't know, but finding out the actual referee record against certain teams is, like, pretty tough to do. You have to really dig into the numbers so people see that, and then everyone just runs with it. Meme said four and three. It's <laughs> <laughs> a real stat. So now we got to get into the fake ref stat game. Which is so funny. Four and three. That's you guys are talking about twelve and zero, right? Yeah, twelve yeah. and zero. Yeah, yeah. No, I brought it up uh, with Kirk, That's and he's crazy. like, "You got got," and I was like, "Fuck!" I, they're Scott Foster just in that level where it's like you can just anything you say about him, you're like, "Yep, that makes sense." But yeah, you need Scott Foster. All right, real quick uh, before we finish up talking about Game Three and then talk about Game Four, better help. Life can be overwhelming, and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, irritability, fatigue, and more. So if you are feeling like, you know, you're working too much, not taking enough time for yourself, you need to be aware of burnout. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. So BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing the stress in your life. And the best part about BetterHelp is if you're wary of therapy, if you don't really want to make the commitment, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to if you if you take care of everything else in your life you go to the gym if you you know get your oil fixed if you do all these things maintenance wise you better be doing it for your health as well your mental health because you need to make sure that you're feeling good and better help will help you get there it's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash PMT. That's B E T T E R H E L P.com slash PMT. BetterHelp is the way to get you feeling better uh, about your mental health. Talk to a therapist. There's You have nothing to lose here. It is something that everyone should do, even if you don't feel burnt out right now, even if you don't feel down right now. You know that it comes in waves. So start prioritizing your mental health with BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com slash PMT. Check it out today. 10% off your first month at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash PMT. Okay. Um, so, Hank, you're being uh, weirdly – are you are you nervous? I can't get the vibe of, like, are, are you nervous of a jinx? Because I, I have now, like, game three showed me that the best, the best version of the Celtics, the Warriors cannot beat. I'm being honest. That's just my honest take that's, on it. And, and that's what's scary, I guess. Like saying that you might not have your best and like you 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 might beat yourself? Yes. Okay. I could see that. I mean, they have Porn Perforly off uh, 
a loss or sorry off a win so it, yeah i could see that I happening like on friday it's been night. it's been the it was like this in the milwaukee series like this in the miami series like they they had it was all three series was the same thing where it's like they looked like the better team they kind of had control and then they just get like they have they just throw up stinkers i think the only thing you have to be worried about at this point when you say it's scary do you mean like it's all lining up too perfectly. Like this can't be real. Yes. How yes. good we're playing and how how much clearer it is that that we're the better team in this series. That like everything to you is just like perfect. It's going swimmingly, and you're just worried that this is all like being set up to get crashed down. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Draymond, by the way, also just like is he's terrible. Yeah, no, he's not good. He's yeah, he's he has not good at he like can't play offensive basketball. No, and he's just dirty. Yeah. Yes. He broke the code last night. Yes, he did. What on the Tatum? I mean, that wasn't. Well, that no, was... he went after Tatum's injured shoulder. Yeah. See, like, I, I, honestly, unbiased, unbiased me. Like the Payne Pritchard thing, I didn't think was that crazy. I didn't think that was that crazy either. Like, I don't think he was. I don't know if you if you have cameras on it like that, you could probably do that for a million plays. Uh, are you friends with Paul Pierce now? Yeah, absolutely. We're boys. <laughs> so when's he coming on the show? Yeah, he knew. Get, he, could you I get think us? we. Could, I actually think we could probably. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, I can try and make that happen now that we're we're BFFs. But he, he came up to Dave. I mean, honestly, this is funny. Dave will probably say it. So I, there was like, it's like the Legends Club where you can like hang out before the game. We got brought in there, and you need to get a wristband. But we got brought in by someone, so I didn't get a wristband, and I left to go to the bathroom. And I come back in. The usher was like, "Oh, you need a wristband." There was people like right behind the gate that were like, oh, no, he's fine. He's, he's with us. He's like, no, you need a wristband. Like, you're not coming in. And so I texted Dave and some kid comes up to me. He's like, Dave's talking to Paul right now. Like, he, I don't know if he's going to come out. And I didn't know what that meant. And then he came and got me. And then like we walked back in. It was him and Pierce. And I guess Pierce, he was like, Pierce came up to Dave and was like, oh, what's up, Dave? Like, love Barstool, blah, blah, blah. Like, Dave was not expecting that. So I think I think we can get him on. Yeah, okay. we, we should. And what we should have done when you when you sat his phone, when you, like, stole his phone from him. But I also missed that initial. your number into there. Yeah, like, I went to the bathroom and got stuck outside, and I missed, like, the initial, like, you know, embrace with Paul, too. Yeah. yeah. Combo. How was um how was the party? With I was here? rattled after the phone thing. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was definitely, Yeah, you like, sat, you smushed his phone. I sat on his phone, and I was, he was like, that's my phone. I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> I love it. Like underneath my ass crack. I was did, like, oh my god. Did you get here you go. Did you go out and like actually party last night with Guy Fury? Yeah, we were at the club till till it closed. And then we were at a casino, played some blackjack. Hell yeah. It's fun. That's awesome. Hell yes. Guy Fury, is he as cool as I hope he is? Dude, he is like the most down to earth, down to earth guy in the world. You You're living the dream. He's I mean, it was just like it's it's crazy to say. That's where it's like so funny, like the pictures and stuff. It's like he's he's just the the chillest, like chillest guy funny dude and then it's like it's guy fieri like you just see the way people react to him and it's like people just love him yeah like it's absolutely insane everyone that's what and that's what i'm saying it's like you in being in boston there's obviously a lot of fans people see dave and they they react a certain way they're like oh what's up dave but like people see guy and they're just like oh my god like and it's like everyone i love i love it too because there's it, it it's a great testament that the internet is not real life because i know there was a moment where like people tried to ironically like shit on guy fieri and then you go out in public with him and you're like he's just the most beloved guy ever that gives me hope for the world i think what happened was the new york times wrote that review of yes, the american that's kitchen right yep. and everybody read it and was like this is just really mean right to uh, a guy toward, who doesn't do guy anything who's actually like a, a very positive person right and so it was it was kind of cool to see everybody be like yeah you know what fuck that guy we're guy fury fans yeah he's just a good guy that makes people happy yeah and it's cool that everyone loves him out in the wild that's that's exactly what i would expect out of guy fury um okay so uh game four friday night i don't i guess i could see santa the fino tequila that was just tequila. there it is it was great i guess i could see the warriors winning i just don't i, I think i think that they're gonna lose and then I think they're going to win, win game five. Game five, yeah. And then Hank will be on the wood for on the wood. I want I want confetti, Hank. Wow, has he? Hank? I don't know. What a moment that would be. I, I again, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm very appreciative. If I never went to another game, like I'd be I'd be fine with it. But in if you're in Dave's shoes and you don't invite me, like then you're then you're a jinx. He yeah. could be a jinx. True, yeah. true. How does it feel to be, to be the most important part of this podcast? 
Just Easily. like the most famous person by far. Easy. I mean, hey, we've all had our championship runs. You had the Caps. P- Big Cat had the Cubs. Like it's just it's just what happens sometimes when you get when you when you go on these runs and you're in the you know center stage. Yeah, except like for you, you've had it how many times? times? <laughs> yeah. How many championships have you seen in your day? Have you counted? I think it's Barstool? 17 or 18 since this podcast. No, since you can remember the being The Patriots alive. have won twice. The Red Sox won. The Bruins went to game seven. I've had four, uh, no, six championship runs, I think, just since this podcast has started. It's <laughs> insane. What about what about in your lifetime? Do you know how many championships? I believe it's 17. Fuck you. I think Jake could probably fact check that. Fuck, fuck you, Hank. All right. Well, um, what else we got? We got the Live Tour has off and running. Hank, you're a fan of it, which uh, you that's, just popped that, on before we started. You're that, like, I think I'm into it. That's a choice. Yeah. And you've made it. I mean, if a fan, like, I'm watching it. Yeah. That's the thing. It's entertaining. It's like, do you feel it's like, it, like they have, like, random college kids mixed in? It's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Like, yeah. the coverage is just like, it'll go from Dustin Johnson to, like, a kid that looks like he's 16. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. One thing I've realized. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's. It's entertaining. Like, I can't. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. Like the uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia has enough money where they could literally just pay every celebrity enough money to just go live in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's how fucking rich they are. Yeah, they can just buy. They're buying friends, and it happens sometimes. And so the PGA Tour came out today, and they said we're suspending everybody that's playing on the Live Tour. Um, Phil Mickelson went out today, and man, he looks. He you want to talk about a guy that looks rough. Well, the, the leather coat was so great because he really, I mean, everyone was clowning on him, but he really is like the, the divorcee dad going through the midlife crisis being like, I'm just going to take this Saudi money real quick. <laughs> um, and he's, yeah, he, he does look rough. He looks like he hasn't slept. There also was a nice grouping of PGA players who did the I'm not fired, I quit move yeah, where they re- smart. revoked their own card. Um, I don't know. It was well, weird that they, they, they waited till the, Live tour started to make that announcement. To make the announcement right before it's, it, I think it's just basically a, a case of procrastination where you don't want to deliver bad news to somebody, and so you wait until like the the night before, and you hit up your boss, and you're like, "Hey, um, not gonna make it in. Uh, MBS just gave me four hundred million dollars, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I'm gonna jump over to London real quick and play in this tournament." It, I feel like they just they just. Delayed the inevitable until the very last minute. It had big, uh, like, uh, asking your wife for a divorce after she had already moved out energy. Where it's like, it's already been over. And you're like, hey, I think we should get a divorce. Or well, like, I have, I have a new boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know that you're about to get caught doing something bad. So then you ask for the divorce right there. Yeah. So so Phil actually put a, um, put a vest on before he teed off today. That's the Augusta National Golf Course vest. Oh, wow. So he's like begging. He's like... Please, please continue to let me play in the Masters if I really want to. That's what's going to get interesting, is if these guys aren't allowed to play in majors, then they're going to be like, oh, shit, what have I done? That's the only thing that they really care about as golfers to begin with. It's like the money and then also how many majors. Majors, get yeah. To play yeah. Yeah, and we had, uh, we had a moment where we thought our guy Brooks, he did the eyeballs emojis. Um, it actually was a good test run for us just in case any of our friends do. <laughs> uh, join the live tour because the part of my take group chat Brooks was fucking with everyone. He's not joining the live tour. He now he, he, currently, he, yeah, yeah for, he, for he did the eyes emoji and then uh, like three hours later was like, whoops, forgot the link and it was like Saquon Barkley's looking great in in OTAs. But it was it was a genius move for the PIP bonus stuff. Yeah, because he's probably he, like he's probably like on his or he, no, is he doing? He's never mind. He had like he's hundreds like on his hun- honeymoon, but he's, yeah, yeah, he, he's on his honeymoon, I think. But he had like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of replies, and obviously a lot of retweets and and likes and favorites on it. And he was just trolling everybody, but that's good because he's going to make money off. That. And he also so I so it, how it went was he did the eyeballs emoji on the part of my take group text. Um, you've never seen a group of people be like, well. W- like money's money. Like he should go live his happy life. Like we were so quick to be like, we still love him. Like, we, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, so then I texted him and he said that, uh, if he wins the PIP, then he'll throw us a party. Oh, so there it is. Nice. So, yeah. So we'll just have to start interacting. Well, and retweeting. Now more. we have to just essentially become like a, a giant 
commercial for Brooks Kepka all Correct. the time. Correct. I, we should retweet every tweet that he has. Yep. Yep. And then it, I, if you're an award winning listener, it's your duty now to interact with that tweet. Yeah. Respond to every tweet. Respond being to like, every yeah, tweet. Yeah. We'll throw a part. We'll invite some AWL. Yes. Well, yeah. D- does he know that? No. Okay. Yeah. But we'll invite I said some. We could be two. We'll invite some AWLs to the party. And I want Luda there. Yes. I want my Luda. My, my Luda that I didn't get at the wedding. But um, yeah. Brooks, listen. I'm not going to judge if Brooks ends up going, but I hope that he doesn't. Yeah. But if he does, that's fine. Yeah. Whatever makes fine. him happy. Right. We're, we... I just want Brooks to be happy. Correct. Exactly. We I want don't want agree- to be happy. I might not agree with his lifestyle, but I want him to be happy. And if he loves playing on the Live Tour, then love is love, and he should be allowed to do that. Correct. Exactly. Um, and he- then the last thing I had was the Rams are just... I, I, I mean, there's never been a team that's just better at doing future future Rams problems. They they signed Cooper Cup to a big deal after signing Aaron Donald to a big deal. I, I mean, what can you say other than like I respect this at this point? Like, there, McVay is probably just has it circled like 2025. Call call the executives Leave. at ESPN, Fox, and CBS. I mean, do we know that the salary cap is even a real thing? No, in it's terms not. of being enforced. Because my my theory is that the NFL just said. Okay, we're going to make a salary cap. Every team has to be underneath it. And then they just send like a series of threatening letters to teams that are not in compliance with the salary cap, but they don't actually have a guy that's tracking it and enforcing actual penalties against it. Right, right. It's just like you better watch out because if you go into next year, you're going to be in cap hell. And then they send a strongly worded letter saying – uh, you are currently two, you know, two million dollars over the salary cap for the league year, and then they just never follow up on that. It's crazy. And they hope nobody calls them out on the bullshit. But smart teams like the Rams and Saints, they're just like, okay, we see through this game. Yeah, we're just gonna keep, keep worrying about it later. Keep hoping the cap goes up. Keep hoping nothing happens, and it's working. Yeah, yeah, it's smart. I, I just, res- I'm at the point now where I respect it as someone who loves to do s- similar things where it's like, oh, I'll do that. Yeah. In the future. Oh, I'll do that in three months. Oh, I'll, you know, yeah. Sign me up for that. Stupid bets. Like yeah. that's, it's a great way to live. I honestly look at the teams that have the most salary cap available and they're always the worst teams. Yeah. It's like you, you suck. Yeah. You, you need go to fill spend this some up. money, go spend your money. Yeah. Live today. Like there's no tomorrow. They're just, they're, they're basically the Rams have like a target wooden board above all of their doors. Mm-hmm. Live, a, laugh, yeah. love. Yeah. That should really be the live tours. Mm-hmm. Like if they, if they co-opted that, it'd be great. All right. What if it live, was... laugh, love, unless it's same sex. Yeah. Or <laughs> li- live like you were dying. Yeah. Cause you and might, it's a, and it's a cause you might, if you piss us <laughs> yes, off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get to our interviews. We got Kirk Goldsberry. Instant reaction from Wednesday night. It's going to be great. We're talking. We're breaking down the game, uh, and then we have our good friend Danny Woodhead, and we will do Firefest on the other side. Before we get to Kirk Goldsberry, he's brought to you by Skrill. Skrill is the best digital wallet for gamblers because it was built for gamblers. Sophisticated gamblers use it to manage their bankroll, whether they're playing games like poker. Or betting on their favorite sports. They manage their bankroll using the wallet, which allows them to pay instantly and securely. It's payments without limits, basically. You can access your bankroll with instant deposits and withdrawals, and also draw the cash using your prepaid card. This gives you access to your bankroll wherever you are in the world in any currency. Skrill thinks about your security relentlessly, so you don't have to share your private financial details needlessly or repeatedly. This week only, the first 20 customers who sign up at skrill.com slash barstool and complete your account verification get a $100 Skrill bonus. That's 100 bucks in Skrill bonus. Terms and conditions apply. That's skrill.com slash barstool, S-K-R-I-L-L dot com slash barstool. Complete that account verification. Get a $100 Skrill bonus if you're one of the first 20 customers to do it. And now, here's Kirk Goldsberry. Okay, we are welcoming on our very good friend. It is right after the game. So it's a time capsule. We're going to run this on Friday show, but it's a time capsule. We're getting instant reaction from one of the smartest basketball minds in the world. It is our good friend, Kirk Goldsberry. Um, I don't know where we want to start, Kirk. I actually, well, I actually know exactly where we want to start because I know you have a higher understanding of the game. You have numbers that you can give us, but I have a question just from the jump. Is it fair to say, throw out like the shot making and, you know, the fact that Celtics are probably more talented 
the Celtics just straight up out hustled the Warriors tonight. And like rebounding to me, the Celtics are bigger, but still rebounding is a lot of hustle. And it was like right from the jump. They basically were like, no, we're just going to get every 50, 50 ball. Yeah, it's fair to say they trucked them, man. That's the word that I kept thinking. They are a bigger team. They are a stronger team. And for the first time in this series, I think they really asserted that big cat. When they won in game one, it was like crazy three-point shooting. They looked like a lost team in game two. And then in game three, they looked like the best team in the NBA in large part because everybody in the rotation played hard, played smart. Uh, and like you said, the rebounding numbers were good and the points in the paint numbers were good. I think Boston only had 24 points in the paint in game two. They more than doubled that tonight, uh, which isn't just a stat. It's proof that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were playing aggressive, asserting their physical advantages and making plays in the teeth of the Warriors defense. So for me, yeah, it's fair to say they out hustled them. The word I kept thinking, they trucked those dudes. They were bigger, stronger, and better. Yeah. I like that. Would you say like, are the Celtics, are they intimidating? Are the Warriors a little bit intimidated? <laughs> when they play like that PFT, they are, they look like the biggest, baddest group of dudes in the league. Um, but it, it, it was, a, it, what's weird about the series in game two, they didn't look like that at all. It looked like Draymond could get in their heads. looks like they couldn't dribble down the court without dribbling off their foot. Uh, and they were afraid to make plays or couldn't get plays made in the paint. Uh, and so when they play like they did in that raucous arena, with guys like Hank, three drinks in, four drinks in, Guy Fieri sitting there. It's intimidating, <laughs> man. It's intimidating for a team like the Golden State Warriors to go in there and play against a team like that. Yeah, this is a big dub for everybody that said like five years ago that the Golden State Warriors were, were soft, that they were a soft team. And now if you wait long enough on a take and they run into a team that will truck you like the Celtics, you could eventually be proven right. Also, if, if – Draymond Green just ends up falling off completely. Is it fair to say from a, from a basketball nerd standpoint, does Draymond suck now? Does Draymond suck now? I'm not ready to go there, but Draymond has not been good enough PFT. And I think he's the key to the series. If the Warriors want to win it, I think Draymond would own up to not being good tonight. I mean, he fouled out uh, and that might've been the difference. The splash brothers were actually pretty good, right? They made a lot of threes uh, and the Warriors defense let them down tonight. PFT. Uh, after holding Boston to 88 points in game two and looking like themselves, they gave up 116 tonight. Uh, we're slow on rotations. They got toasted on the boards, like Big Cat said, and simply put, they got beat up. Uh, yeah. And and and, and one of the things I like about Draymond, guys, is that he'll own the defense. He, he says Steph runs the offense, I run the defense. Well, if that's true, this one's on you uh, and, and your leadership to get back into the series because, Draymond, you weren't good enough. You fouled out. Uh, your shooting numbers have been miserable, but we expect you to be better on defense. Yeah, he shouldn't shoot threes like ever. Um, the wh I like the game was great. Like it was, even though it ends up being a sixteen point game, it it felt like a great game because the Celtics jumped all over them. The third quarter Warriors showed up. Uh, we got to see a seven point possession, which I don't think we've ever seen before, which was crazy. Now I tweeted at you, Kirk. Did you have some flashbacks knowing that the Warriors then benefited from a landing space call? Uh, oh, thinking God. back to Zaza taking out Kawhi when they were down like 20 in that, in that uh, playoff game. And you were sitting there. Did you, were you, were you in the, you were obviously in the arena when Kawhi went out. Yes. Right? I was working for the San Antonio Spurs in the front office during that awful game. Um, we were up, I think 26 big cat. Uh, and then the Zaza play happened and Kawhi was already limping around a little bit. Some people think that Zaza targeted his ankle. Some people don't. Regardless, Kawhi was out. It changed the sport forever because now we have these. And you're right, Al Horford, uh, who I don't think is a dirty player, you know, was contesting the greatest shooter in the world. And he came down uh, trying like heck to, to contest that shot. And Stefan landed on his foot. And it was scary because Stefan has those ankle problems himself. And, uh, man, those are dangerous plays. I did have flashbacks. In fact, my wife texted me. She was like, did you hear the announcers? I still mad. She's still more mad about it than I am. But it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dirty, it's a dirty, dirty situation. I don't want I, – I, yeah, that gave me flashbacks. Short answer, yes. Hell yes. Now, we, we, in, in fairness, um, talking about Draymond, he also broke the code. I don't know if you saw. He, <laughs> he tried to tug on Jason Tatum's arm – after a free throw, he also kind of uh, fell on Jalen Brown. It's like he's he's right on that edge where he's constantly like, you know, like the, 
I feel like NBA fans 50 and up are like, man, this is good, just hard basketball. And then everyone's like, dude, are you just intentionally trying to rip his shoulder out of his socket? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, he's he he messes with that Rodman line. Like, if you're rooting for him, like if you're a Bulls fan in the 90s against Carl Malone, oh my God, this guy's incredible. What a what a ferocious defensive presence he is. And and then if you're rooting for the Jazz, like this guy's a, a maniacal jerk. You know, I, I hate this guy. Uh, and that's Draymond, and that's what he brings to this Warriors team. And without him, big cat, to PFT's earlier point, without him, their defense isn't going to be good enough to beat this Celtics team. I, I have one sort of dumb guy stat that I'll throw out to you. The, the Celtics are now 11-0 and 0 when they score 108 points in these playoffs, and they're 3-7 and 7 when they don't. Um, so if you're Draymond Green in this defense, you need to you need to hold the Celtics below that magic number um, because the Celtics defense doesn't take a night off, and, you know? And, yeah. And, and on top of that, it's the turnover stat that everyone's seen at this point where the Celtics with 16 or more turnovers are basically, uh, I think they're zero and five or something like that, or maybe one in five in the playoffs. And then yeah. have 15 or less turnovers. They're essentially unbeatable. Um, I think like 13 and two or something. So yeah, I mean, it, the, the defense, it seems like that's like you need to make the Celtics make mistakes and you need to hold them to let, you know, obviously it's a dumb guy stat under. You want them to score less, but you're right. Like Draymond, that he is the he is the X factor on that part, and he totally failed tonight. It seems like this, this, this series is, is, is pretty consistent when Golden State has the ball. They're going to end up with 105, 110 points. But, yeah, we're seeing a lot of variance when the Celtics have the basketball because of those turnovers and because of Golden State's ability to, to be more physical or keep up with the physicality of the Celtics on that. So, yeah, keep your eyes. When the Celtics have the ball, are there shots going in? Jason Tatum's had a couple bad nights shooting the ball. He was great tonight. Um, but his passing, their ability to get into the paint in game three was the big difference. So if that's a trend going forward, the, the Warriors are in trouble. If Draymond can now flip the switch and be like – channel that crazy Draymond energy like he did in game two and hold that Celtics defense down. We're going to have a long seven game series. I still think that's where this is going, uh, but he, game four is going to be huge. Uh, if Draymond and that defense can, can hold the Celtics down to 108 or less, they have a good chance. Right. So you mentioned, you mentioned Tatum's off night uh, when they, when they had the loss, what you do in an off night doesn't matter if you lose according to the people that vote on the MVP award for the finals. And this is something that we're tracking here uh, very closely. Mm -hmm. Part of my take, because Billy has to go vegan for an entire month, including the 4th of July, which is like his, that's Billy time. And um, we need to, we need to get an update on uh, who in your estimation is tracking to be the MVP of this series. Is it going to be Tatum or is it going to be Brown? Let me give you the stats too, real quick, Kirk. So Jalen yeah. Brown, 68 points, 22 rebounds, 13 assists. Jason Tatum, 66 points, 17 rebounds, 25 assists. So pretty like statistically, they're they're pretty much the same right now. Yeah, I think it's time to fire up the impossible burgers because I'm going Jason Tatum, folks. And uh, I think <laughs> Billy's I, I would recommend the impossible burgers. They're better than, than you think they are. They're not bad. Um, they're not bad. Um, I, I don't think he'll enjoy them quite as much as an all beef patty, but I think Jason Tatum is going to win the MVP because the Celtics are, are only going to win the series. If Jason Tatum has a few more good games, uh, and his passing in particular guys has been great. Uh, in that game one, he had a terrible night shooting, uh, but his passes created 35 points for the Celtics. He can score it, pass it, rebound it, steal it. He's, he's just slightly more complete and slightly more important to the Celtics' success, in my opinion. Um, so I think he's a safer bet. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be shocked, PFT, if Jalen Brown wins the, the MVP, if the Celtics win the series. But my money uh, and my impossible burgers would be on Jason Tatum at this point. It, it like does feel like, to make the Jalen Brown argument, it feels like he gets them going a lot faster. Yeah. Like he tonight, I think game one tonight. was similar. Mark Jackson astutely said uh, uh, Jalen Brown was the best player in the first quarter after he dropped 17, five and three. Um, <laughs> and he, he does though. Like it feels like he gets them in a spot where then Jason Tatum can take over later on in the game, which I guess, I mean, winning time is probably going to win the MVP, but it, it, it like, that that first quarter when the Celtics jumped on him and had that energy, that was a lot because of Jalen Brown and him driving and hitting open shots. 
Yeah, he scored 17. He assisted on seven more in that first quarter, I think. So that's 24 by my count. And and the dubs only had 22 points. So Jalen, you're exactly right. He's, he's been that, I think, twice by my count in these first three games. But Gat, he has been the spark. Uh, he has been the leader right when the game starts setting the tone. Um, so, he, you know, like I said, if Jalen Brown wins the finals MVP, good for Jalen Brown. He could, there's definitely a path where, path where he deserves it. Uh, and he was great in game three, especially at the beginning when the Celtics sort of needed that big start at home. Um, and, and he gave it to them in a way that Jason did, not but Jason caught up by the end of the game, had a great game. So. And, but if, if Tatum has these moments like he's had in the last couple of games where at the very start of the game, he like grabs his shoulder and winces in pain and acts like he needs to get it amputated. That whole thing. If he keeps doing that and the stats are even, I feel like that's tilting it a little bit towards Jason Tatum because he's a warrior. Yeah. Well, remember when Paul Pierce won the finals MVP, you know, he's been known to go out in a wheelchair and come back in. So, you know, Jason's just carrying on a proud Celtics tradition. Tatum needs to shit his pants. Is what you're saying. It is, it is very Roethlisberger esque that Jason Tatum, like it's, I don't think he's, I think he's obviously got an injury. I'm not saying he doesn't have an injury, but he does do a good job to PFT's point of reminding everyone about his injury very early on where you're like, there's been multiple times this playoffs where I'm like, oh, is, is Jason Tatum really hurt? And it's like, no. And then he drops 27. <laughs> Wait, does does this does his medical tape on his shoulder PFD have an accent talk like the walking boot does for Big Ben? Does, <laughs> yeah, we have French. that bit. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, je, oh, je ne sais pas. Qu'est-ce que c'est avec avec mon uh, Draymond, que c'est avec mon shoulder? Don't, Draymond, don't touch my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. We just burned a new uh, walking boot. All right. So wait, Kirk, you just said uh, this game, this series is going seven. So if that were to be the case, I would assume the Warriors would, it would be very hard for them to obviously come back from a three, one lead. We've seen it happen. Th- has it um, ever happened? Have yeah, we ever seen? <laughs> yeah. But if the Warriors are going to win, you know, like to, to make this a long series, I think they probably have to win Friday night. So yeah. what are the adjustments? Like what are, what do they have to change to, to win this game? And and it might even just be the Celtics have been so Jekyll and Hyde all playoffs, just let the Celtics implode. Because <laughs> yeah, it does right. feel like if they have a game like this and then they play a bad game and then they play a great game. And then they just hope that they end up winning in game seven, which they've done twice so, so far. Yeah, I think you're right, Big Cat. It does seem like they're great after a loss. There's now 7-0 and in these playoffs after a loss, the Boston Celtics are, which is the longest such streak in playoff history. So to get to that, you have to lose a bunch of games. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and you can't lose a couple in a row, obviously. So it does seem like the Celtics are due for a loss. Now that's, again, dumb guy reasoning. It's all about the defense. Draymond, Kevon Looney, the bigs have to do a better job on the glass. They have to out sort of match their own size. They have to over index on the boards and rim protection in a way they did not do in game three, but in a way they did do uh, in game two, they have to be physical without fouling out. Now Draymond has fouled out twice in the series. Uh, His physicality has to be perfectly calibrated in game four to get those stops without going over the top. Um, We've seen him teetering on the edge. We've seen him cost this golden state team a finals before by getting kicked out of a game uh, or suspended for a game with this, his kick into LeBron's area of, of, um, of sensitivity there. So mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, it, it comes down to Draymond green uh, PFT asked me earlier, is Draymond just bad now? I don't think he's bad, but he needs to be better. If he isn't, the series isn't going to go to seven. So yeah. I think they need to win that, the defensive battle in game four. Yeah, um, we. I can't believe we've gone this long without asking you about the about the basket before oh, yeah. the game. So before the game started, the basket was was identified as being potentially a couple inches too tall by a member of the Warriors staff. They went out, they measured it. I I never even knew that that tool existed, which is just like yeah, a yeah. rod that you hang from the rim. Norman to measure yeah. seven to to measure uh, ten feet. So uh, is that something that you've ever even heard of in, in your days? Like, would Pop have some guy? walk out onto yeah. the court and measure the basket before every game. <laughs> yeah. There's a legendary shooting coach at the Spurs named Chip England, who is one of the most brilliant shooting coaches and player development coaches in NBA history, but he's also very, very observant about the, the, the inflation of the basketball, the, the springiness of the rim, whether the rim is crooked, whether it's too high or too low. Um, 
So yes, there, this is, this is something that the good teams and all teams really have never seen it be too high or too low. Sometimes you see that crooked, the crooked thing. Um, I think it would be fun if the Celtics actually had a smaller rim or like a carny rim, like a, a, you know, it's not, it's 18 inches wide, but if they had like a 16 inch rim, that would be they, how many splashes you get with a 16 inch rim. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. It's also funny because everyone obviously made Bill Belichick jokes after it, but it's like, know your history. <laughs> like this is a red hour back move. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, like it's right. almost, you can almost tip your hat and be like, it's probably the ghost of red hour back being like, yeah, you, you, you don't get to go to Boston in the playoffs and not have to deal with at least something weird. Something we remember the, the court had the dead spots and only the Celtics knew where the ball would sort of bounce abnormally and the other team wouldn't, and that caused a bunch of turnover. So it's, yeah, it's gamesmanship, but yeah, it, it was, it was an interesting moment as was when your colleague Hank almost shot a corner three from the left three there. He yeah. should have let that go guys. Come well, on. He's, he's, he's got to let that go. He's, he's a know. genius actually, because it, if you, if you miss, then that's falling you around forever, like forever. You think yeah. we're going to ever let that go? That's going to be like Hank's calling card for the rest of his life. Now, if he makes it, I, mean, I don't, I actually don't think that he would get kicked out. No, I don't. He, he wouldn't. He, cause he's with Dave and like those seats, I think they're, you know, they, I mean, they're on the self, they're literally on the Celtics Instagram right now being like big, big names, big games. And it's Dave, Hank and Guy Fieri. So and Bill I, Walton. Yeah. And I, I don't think, I don't think he'd get kicked out. And if he made that, he made he's a legend at Boston. He, he what what does he shoot from the left corner, big cat? Does he shoot 30% from the left corner? What are okay. we saying? Is- so I, I want to be, I love Hank. I love him to death. I've played basketball with Hank many times. He would have missed that shot without a doubt because he's not a bad shooter, but he is one of those shooters that has to find his rhythm. Mm-hmm. He would have airballed it. I think he would actually agree with me. Because he's like one of those guys that he'll show up to the gym, first three shots won't even hit rim, and then he'll hit like eight or nine in a row. But the first shot, no chance. Like, it's hard to hit the first shot if you haven't been shooting for oh, anyone. Then he, then he absolutely he's made the right call not yeah. shooting that ball. If, yeah. if he if he needed to warm up and he's going to air ball that, that's a bad look, right? If he shoots an air ball and gets kicked out. Of the game. Yeah. The, the <laughs> counterpoint would be, though, he, he looked like he caught that in rhythm. He had yeah, like Clay Thompson, like quick release on that. I mean, yeah, he, he was already up. in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was He's there. Been, and he I was uh, proud of him. He actually ha- he had a better night from three than Draymond did. Can <laughs> you make? Can you make a uh, 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 one of your heat maps for Hank? Yeah. Like yeah, his well, O for O both, from that corner. Yeah, he, he has <laughs> made the same made three same numbers made threes as Draymond in this series. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. He should Draymond should stop shooting threes. I know he like has to every now and then to try to keep people honest, but it's like it actually does the opposite. It's like everyone just is reminded that he cannot shoot threes. Well, real talk, when they have Looney and Draymond out there, it's like they're playing three on five on offense. Uh, and, yeah. and, and if, if Looney's not getting easy looks at the rim. And and that's bad. And that's one thing to watch. Like Stefan and Clay, uh, Wiggins, Poole to some extent are carrying this offense. They need somebody else, um, Looney or Draymond, to have something to give on offense. Because, yeah, it seems like it's three on five when they have their two big lineup out there. And that's not going to get it done against the Celtics team that has a much sort of more robust um, group of scorers in, in the game at almost all times. Yeah, they. they I, I I like Kevon Looney just because he sets awesome screens, and I I <laughs> noticed that like he he puts some meat on it. I, I actually yeah. have a nerdy basketball question for you because it's obviously very funny whenever you just like are you know scrolling through Twitter and and it seems like everyone sitting on their couch has an answer to uh, like how to play defense in an NBA Finals game, but it's obviously been discussed. Like the the Warriors are running less of their motion, you know, everyone running around and more pick and roll with Steph up top. And there was a few times where Al Horford got caught, especially the seven point mm-hmm. possession where he's doing drop coverage. I, everyone's like, you can't do drop coverage. You can't do this. Like, I, I just feel like sometimes Steph is so good. I know you have to be up on him and you can't give him even a second, but it's also one of those easy Twitter answers that everyone has mm-hmm. where they're like coaching. And it's like, I, it has to be more difficult than that. Like what's the solution for the Celtics? Uh, because it does seem to happen a lot where they run a pick and roll and Steph gets that little glimmer and he hits the shot. Yeah. He's been awesome. And they're following the numbers, big cat, those pick and roll efficiencies. This series have been great for Stefan and, and they are, you're exactly right. Getting away from the motion. So I think it starts with Marcus 
or whoever is at the point of attack trying to get over the screen, uh, not necessarily relying on the drop coverage or the switch with somebody like Al Horford or Robert Williams to defend uh, that quick, dancey ball handling that Stefan likes to do. So can they get the ball out of Stefan's hands by blitzing him? Uh, can can, can, can uh, Marcus Smart do a better job of fighting over these screens? Uh, they need to find a better way to stop him. Stefan did what he needed to do offensively tonight. Again, I, I keep hitting this point. Stefan is not the problem. He is beating the Celtics in the exact same way. This might be his best finals performance we've seen, yeah. period. Yeah. And, and his team isn't there. This isn't a deep enough team. The, the problem isn't there. It's on the other guys uh, and on the defensive end tonight again. So Stefan is, is carrying it. Clay was even great in game three. Uh, it was nice to see that, but I think it just speaks that there's no Sean Livingston here. Andre Godal is not what he used to be. Draymond isn't doing much. Um, Jordan Poole hasn't really flexed aside from that, that, that crazy late, late game and, and, and the, the shots in game two uh, when the game was kind of locked up. But yeah, they need more on offense aside from Stephanie. Well, you're going to get us, you're going to get us roasted online because of what you just said. You just, you forgot. I mean, Kevin Durant would be nice to have right now, too. Yes, I think Kevin Durant would be nice to have right now. And, and you know what? I'll leave that to Stephen A. and some of my colleagues at ESPN. I'm sure they'll hit this one up uh, but, uh, for me. But, you know, this is a team that, that, that won without Kevin and then obviously won two with Kevin. But Kevin won those finals MVPs for good reason when they play a great defense. But you know who shut down Kevin in these playoffs? This Celtics defense. True. Um, and point. and Stefan, you know, if you want to get into the talking heads game, Stefan is doing better against this exact same defense than Kevin did in the first round. So I think that's interesting. But yeah, obviously, if the Warriors had both of those dudes, this would be a different vibe in the series. Oh, okay. So so it just occurred to me what is probably going to happen, what I hope happens now, especially for the talking head situation. I'm hoping that we get a Celtics series win and Steph Curry gets his first finals mvp out of that that would be that would be the ultimate that would be so great threading the take needle that would be that's what we need to happen nick wright wouldn't know what to say (laughs) it would be that would be incredible incredible that would be the perfect ending it would be the probably yeah the the perfect ending of this series i don't know what the talking heads would make of that guys i think that i think that like first take would just implode on itself i i don't know if if like the power of Skip's own brain would probably give him a stroke and he probably just, wouldn't make it. Into, isn't that a lot of red day. meat though, PFT? Like that's a lot of red meat. You can't give the finals MVP to a losing player. Isn't that what you do? Isn't that the well, take? Well, I think that, I think the conversation has become so much bigger than just that. It, it's now a reflection on Steph's entire legacy that the only finals MVP he got was when they lost. Then you can go. It's one of those things that will become a Rorschach test where you can take that little nugget right there and stretch it to, to back up whatever argument you had previously made. It's going to be amazing. That's that's now what we have to root for. And we, by the yeah. way, I, I still do. I, I love that you call him Stefan. Yeah, it's the best There's a level of of uh, comfort with him. Like, you know, the guy I don't I've been I've been like slandering his name by calling him Steph this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, I go by, I call him Stefan. I think that's old fashioned. I, I think that's what we were calling him at Davidson. I don't know why everybody chose Steph. I feel like that's a little personal. I'm, I'm not there with him yet, um, but maybe, you know, a couple more hangs, a couple more golf <laughs> games and I can get there with him. I don't know. By the way, the other, uh, there's two other players I want to talk about real quick. Marcus Smart played great. And yeah. then uh, he had like a, a very impactful game, you know, scored a lot of points. And then Andrew Wiggins, Cause you're talking about like, they need someone else. Yeah. I just looked up. I looked it up. Andrew Wiggins had 18 tonight. He's got like the quietest 18 in the world. I, yeah. I, I think it's maybe just the fact that like he hasn't been able to hit those big threes when he's open, but it, it feels like they're going to need like 30 from him one night to, to steal one of these games. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, he's great in transition. Uh, he gives them dunks. He has the potential to tear the internet down with a dunk. Uh, that could help the momentum. They're finding him open for three. He's got to make those. Uh, but you're right. Like he is one of the two guys, the other one being Jordan Poole, that could sneak in a 28 point game here and really lift this offense over the hump. Um, Marcus Smart was awesome tonight. It feels like he's finally getting back 
uh, from his injury, you know, and the, the, one of the cool stats that came out of this t- tonight was that, that uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Marcus Smart are the first trio to have 20 points, five rebounds and five assists in the finals game since Kareem magic and Michael Cooper did it in 1984. Again, super weird esoteric ESPN stat. I love those. Uh, but it just proves that this is a deep team. And these three guys were all contributing tonight in Boston in, in a big game. Um, and, and, and all played very, very well in a way that the, the Warriors don't have that kind of depth. That's a stat that we need to hear somebody like uh, Wiggins or Poole getting numbers that they haven't been getting so they can match a stat like that. I don't yeah, think yeah. that's going to happen. That yeah. is a very cool stat. Can you explain to us, uh, maybe if you have another like dumb or a smart way, or I guess a dumb way to say something smart. Um, the fourth quarter starts and the Celtics – respond to the third quarter Warriors onslaught because you don't see many teams bounce back from taking that beating from the Warriors in the third quarter. It can demoralize you, but the Celtics, like I would just be like, they're a tough team is what I would say. But from like a basketball perspective, is there any way that you can quantify what the Celtics were able to do or what they changed, what they did differently from what most teams do after they received that beat down from the third quarter Warriors? Yeah. I had that in my nose PFT. So yeah, they take the haymaker in game one. They respond with an awesome, game uh, or fourth quarter three point shooting clinic. Uh, what was interesting in game one was that Stephen Curry took his normal rest at the end of the, at the beginning of the fourth quarter and set the first six minutes. And that's when the game flipped uh, tonight. Steve Kerr actually rested Stephen Curry at the end of the third. Now you have me in my head about what am mm. I calling this? Dude? No, it's good. I don't, uh, I, I don't mean to do that. I like it when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Steph, came out and played the first part of the fourth quarter uh, and, and it's, it still didn't really affect it. So I think they're trying to tweak their rotations because the Warriors are a much better team statistically when Stephen Curry's on the court shocker. I know. Uh, but in game one, they tried to sort of, they, they exploited no Stephen in, in the court at the beginning of that fourth uh, tonight, he was out there and they still did it. Uh, I think it's just, you know, the Golden State Warriors deserve a lot of credit for having this third quarter magic haymaker that they could throw. They threw it again tonight. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I think it is a real sign of the, the toughness of this team, especially on offense, that they can come back out and, and throw their own haymaker in the fourth. It's won both game one and game three for us. Yeah. Should we start talking more about like the, the fourth quarter Celtics? Is that a thing? Hey. Yeah. I think we should make that Let's a thing. Yeah. Let's do it a thing. Let's do it, a thing. It's key to game four. It does. And Steph did have foul trouble, which I, everyone was expecting a Scott Foster game. Everyone was expecting the refs to control this game. I don't think that that happened. Like, wait, I, big I, news, big news, big cat. It, yeah. I was behind Scott Foster in the metal detector line on the way to the arena. Yeah. I had to talk to him for a second. It was very exciting. And what do you how say? Many cell, he how like, many cell phones did he have? <laughs> did he whisper yeah. in your ear? Like, Hey, take the Celtics. Take tonight. the under. Take, <laughs> take the under. Yeah. The overhit. No, he's, I think he's, tw- I think he's 12 and 0 in Celtics games. This, or I, I saw this stat. I'm going to pull it up, but yeah, he probably whispered to you. So he's 12 and 0 uh, in Celtics games this year. Wasn't so, that, or the Celtics I, are 12 I don't mean and 0. to be this guy. Wasn't that, uh, wasn't that fake? Fake news. It was fake. Okay, then maybe it was fake. Yeah, I guess Scott Foster's reached a level where any stat, I'll be like, yeah. oh yeah, that makes sense. Well, also twenty nine and one in Boston. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> he, he 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 basically he gave Chris Paul COVID for Game Seven of yeah, the, of the right. Mavs series. <laughs> that's right. He, he, he's out there. Yeah, um, injected him with COVID. <laughs> we need to start making up like ref stats because yeah. they're so hard to track. Like nobody knows how to find that, that data. So memes that w- that's what we need to do before the next game. Just find out who one of the refs is and just make something like completely out of thin air up. Yeah. I definitely could, got you duped. Definitely Scott, do that. Yeah. Be, I got duped because Scott Foster, like you could tell me anything about Scott Foster, right. Any which way. And I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's like a Chuck Norris bit at this point with that guy. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> you can make up anything. It sounds true. Everybody hates him. He's like the ref that every team in the league thinks hates them, which is impossible. But yeah, here he is in game three. And uh, I don't think the officiating really had an effect on this game at all. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was interesting for me to be behind him in the metal detector line going into the arena being like, oh gosh, you know, I, I hope one of us gets out of here alive tonight going into that game. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually thought like there was obviously um, – there were some like significant fouls, Steph Curry getting foul trouble, but I thought it was a pretty physical game and they let him play for the most part. I mean, there were some, you know, there's a decent amount of foul shots, but like there was some physical, physical play happening, which I love to see. 
Yeah, guys were fighting into screens, colliding with screeners. Uh, Draymond was playing super physical. In fact, got disqualified for it. And then Stefan had a couple of dumb reach-in fouls. Uh, his fourth foul, I remember, when he was behind Marcus Smart in the third quarter, just yanking at the at the play, which it's just just a bad foul for, you know, if you're trying to be finals MVP, you can't be in foul trouble. Um, but to Steve Kerr's credit, he didn't, quote, unquote, foul out his own players. He let him play through the foul trouble and ended up being okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think that's something to watch, too, especially with Draymond, who's been disqualified in two of these three games um, because of those fouls, and, and he can't be doing that if they want to win game four. Uh, Big yeah. Cat, do you have a rowback question? Because I've got one here from uh, from Bubba. I don't know. Do you know Bubba? Have you met Bubba? New Orleans was he was he in New Orleans? He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he was. I know uh, it by memory. About, so yeah. yeah, it's the rowback question. Promo yeah, code. We, take. we hung out. I think at the bar. Yeah, we did. Yeah. 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 Okay. I so I have. Wait, I, wait, wait, Bubba. We have to set this up. This is the rowback. Question. Rowback question. Promo Buck. code. Take twenty percent off. I'm telling you, a million polos. times. But we'll send you some, yeah. Kirk. We've got some right here. Here's, uh, a, yeah. here's a polo because for you. You love Roback. Mm-hmm. You're always so generous with that. Yeah. 20% mm-hmm. off. Use promo code take. All right. With a Roback question, here's Bubba. Okay. Is there, I want you to look at the stats for when they change to that court side angle, when you're watching the broadcast, I feel like shots never go in. Never. Bad angle. <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah it's true. I, do, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like if, if somebody has run stats on that, I think like, I, I don't know. I think there's some juju about it that it might get in the players' heads. Yeah. yeah they may, they, that <laughs> it's might trigger the magnets theory. and the rims that, yeah. that we know are in there. Yeah, it's like there's some sort of magnetic field when they change the camera, the magnets and the rims are activated and their shots never go in, huh? Yeah. I, yeah. Could I, it could be. You can get bad angles. It happens in football when they go to the sky cam. There's only been yeah. one good play ever. Quarrel that was a Patterson. Quarrel yeah, Patterson. Quarrel yeah. Patterson. Yeah. kick yep. return. Besides it that. happens. Bad angles have killed many thirst traps on Instagram. We know <laughs> yep. this. Exactly. We know this yeah. it's, it's all Facts. about the angles. I t- Listen, yes. I'm the king of mm-hmm. bad angles when I take pictures. <laughs> so I understand this. You can, you look like a different person. I also, if we're doing dumb stats that you should, you should track, uh, I don't know. Are you going to game four? Hell yeah, I am. Okay, you're going to game four. I would love if you're watching. Are you going to game five? You're going to San Francisco? No, that's too far. Okay, so I would love to just get someone to do an actual stat breakdown of how many bangs Mike Breen does because it felt like he was making up for lost time tonight with the COVID uh, that he's been out for. I. I don't know. That would just be a very funny, like bangs by quarter. Like when, when is it most likely? <laughs> just well, with this, to, to be to be fair to to Mike, you know the the Splash Brothers hit I think ten or eleven of them tonight. So that those are oh, he's almost going to always give a bang for either one of those dudes. Yeah, uh, and so there was a probably ten of them there. You know, when Stefan hits one, he's always getting a bang. But I, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not like trying to tell you how to do your job, but I would look at a map of Mike Breen's bangs, like a, an illustration forever. I would just stare at it like, you know, what, oh, what time and like, you know, when it peaks and everything. Yeah, it I would, think I think we can take it even farther and do like decibels yeah. and everything <laughs> like like audio. Oh, that's on, good. On it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's we'll good. See. Yeah. When Stefan hit that shot in Oklahoma City in 2016 from like 35 feet, he gave the real double bang. He was yeah. so excited. Yeah. yeah. The double he did bang. one for Luca, I think, in maybe the bubble. That was the last double bang we've had in a while. Oh, that was the one. Yeah. The yeah. Clipper yeah. one. Yeah. That was an incredible shot from the, I think, the left wing. But yeah, yeah. man, I got to make that map. We'll sell that. Oh, I got to plug something too. We got to yeah. plug yeah. something. Plug yeah, away. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got Father's Day. Are we, are people buying it again? Because it's the best Father's Day. I got it for my dad. And it's the best Father's Day gift out there. Yeah, but breaking news, breaking news. We have a baseball map. Breaking news. He's not here. Wait, you, did you say baseball map? Yeah, we made the pastime national park soon. If your dad okay, likes so you're baseball like, oh, or right, so, basketball. Yeah, you're like, let me just get more into the dad culture. I'm going to do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do a Steely it. Dan map next. <laughs> I oh, love me it. and I'm Big Cat are going to do it. a Grateful Dead. We're going to do a Grateful yeah. Dead one. Yes, but, yeah, I, I actually did, told him. I did baseball. If we could do a Grateful Dead, uh, like so, like all time songs played and everything, I would stare at that forever. For to do it. But what's we the baseball map? So I took the map of the baseball field and labeled it with a bunch of famous plays and obviously Hall of Fame players. There's even Big Cat Meadow on there, uh, named that, after yeah. named after either you or Andres Galarraga. I can't remember which, but. 
it's on there. Uh, but yeah, if you go to the golden hexagon.com, I really do think it's a great father's day gift. If your dad likes maps yeah. and or basketball or baseball. Right I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll right send now. you guys my, my, some. No, my, no, okay, no, no, no. When I get the row back, I'll just send you but then, guys some. You're then never getting you're the row back. That's part you, of the bit. <laughs> you're going to send it to us. And then I'm going to feel like I have to send you a shirt and then I'm going to have to mail that map then to my dad. All right. Yep. Framed. Yeah. I'm going to get the framed one. How about that? I'm going to splurge. You don't have to do that, dude. I'm gonna buy all these. Yeah, buy buy it now. Sorry, I'm, dude, I'm, Kirk, I'm gonna you make you watch get, me buy your map right now, Kirk. We get paid eighty three thousand dollars an episode. We can afford. Oh these my maps. god! What yeah, the actually, fuck? So the crazy part is, like, you when you just plugged your map right then in the time that you spent doing that, that paid for my map. It paid for all of them. Paid for multiple <laughs> maps. <laughs> Thank you, though, Kirk. We really appreciate it. this. Is fun. I like the, these type of games. I. I watched that game and I just want to talk about it right away. So when we have it on a Wednesday night and it's an off night, it's like, I'm, I'm happy that you were able to hop on with us because I feel, I feel good that I was able to dump my brain out. And then now we can, you know, tomorrow we can talk to Hank and uh, hear about Guy Fieri in the club. Dude, he's not going to be up for a little bit. Hey, last, last question. Who's going to win? Who do you guys got in the series? Celts. I think the Celtics are the better yeah, team significantly. The right right now. Yeah, I, think I, I, I have a future on the Warriors. I was hoping the Warriors would go up like one nothing and I'd be able to hedge back. But I, I think the Celtics are just are the only thing that can stop the Celtics at this point are the Celtics. Like yeah, they the have turnovers. to beat themselves. Yeah. yeah. And and that could happen. But I would say if you play this series 10 times, the Celtics win it eight times. Yeah. I think they just have too much size. It's mm-hmm. basketball is a pretty simple game. The bigger, yep. stronger team a lot of times wins. I height, think it's, it's Celtics. Yeah. Celtics <laughs> in six is what I got. I think Boston wins the next game. Golden State comes back to Boston, they win. There it is. Yeah, I'll end it with this. I mean, can you imagine the party in Boston, Massachusetts, if they win this thing at home at well, Game Six? We, we, I mean, Hank will tell us all about it because he'll probably be <laughs> partying in the in the locker room with the guys after the game. Yeah, it'll be quite the scene, and Hank <laughs> will be in the middle of it. Yeah. All right, Kirk. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys. Kirk Goldsberry was brought to you by our great friends over at Shady Rays. Shady Rays sunglasses offer an industry best combination of fit, style, and performance without the big brand price tag. It doesn't stop at the quality. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacement plan. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they're going to send you a brand new pair. Wear with confidence wherever. I love Shady Rays. I'm going to be down the shore this summer. I'm going to be at the beach. You better believe I'm bringing a surplus of Shady Rays with me. I love my Shady Rays. Right now, I'm I'm rocking the PMT exclusive brand. They've got the little uh, mustache, sunglasses, hat, Stella on the sides. Love Shady Rays. Get compliments on them all the time. I love seeing people that purchase the Shady Rays. Tweet at us. Tag Shady Rays. Let us know how much you love these sunglasses. They're They're the exclusive sunglasses partner of Part of My Take. And exclusively for our listeners... Shady Rays is giving out their very best deal of the season. This is the one that you wait all year for. It's sunglass season. Go to ShadyRays.com slash PMT50. You get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's right. 50% off. This is the best deal that they offer. ShadyRays.com slash PMT50. You get 50% off when you order two or more pairs of their polarized sunglasses. And now here is my best friend in the entire world, Danny Woodhead. Okay, we now welcome on our good friend, longtime friend, recurring guest. It is Danny Woodhead. Uh, If you saw the news, most people did. Actually, I don't know how many people follow the U.S. Open qualifying. Danny made it to the last qualifying. uh, Fell a little short, but we wanted to have him on. And honestly, this is going to sound sappy. I wanted you to come on just to be like, dude, I'm proud of you. Uh, it was incredible you got that far, especially considering the fact that you were like a couple years ago were like, I'm going to start golfing, and then you were two two rounds away from the U.S. Open. How's it going? I, I know it's a little bittersweet, but we wanted yeah. to catch up with you. Man, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it is a little bittersweet. Uh, played 32 pretty good holes of golf. Not great, but 32 pretty good. Four holes that just kind of were stupid, but... It is what it is, man. Like, it, it, this is not the last time I'll be trying to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, like you said, like four years ago, if if you would have told me I had a chance, I was 36 holes away from 
being at the U.S. Open, I would have thought you were a moron. But like, I the truth is, like, I was at that situation, and man, it's been a it's been a wild ride, like in my golf journey. But man, I love it. I love playing. I still like today. I'm definitely not going to touch a club, but I uh, probably tomorrow I'll be back at it, just like because I I need to get better. I, I wasn't good enough. I could I could see how like on a on a day if i'm playing good that i could shoot the number to get in yes but like that's the huge difference in an am and a pro Mm -hmm. the pros consistently do it and they're going to be in it regardless where i would have need to have a a really good day like those guys don't need a really good day i would have needed a really good day and uh it just wasn't there but man it's wild yeah yeah wild to say the least yeah that's that would probably have been and we we spoke on the phone before you went to this tournament but i i think i told you this that would have been your biggest athletic accomplishment of all time and you're a guy that's played how many you played for four nfl teams yeah had like 40 touchdowns that qualifying for the u.s open would have been the craziest athletic accomplishment of your life And and it wouldn't have been close like i mean i would even say because there were a lot of pros at the qualifier too. My initial qualifier. I saw Duffner. So like, I thought you were playing against Duffner. Well, and, and the thing is, it's like it's just one of those things. You're like, just to even just to even get to Ohio, that w- it ranks up there with a lot of my ac- athletic achievements because it's also something I'm not supposed to be good at, right? Like it's something that, like I'm supposed to suck. How many NFL running backs play golf? Period. I don't know. Maybe 04 percent. Like, it's just, it's not really a number. Maybe one guy on in the NFL does now. So, like, I just felt like the odds weren't for me uh, to even get to, to that to that qualifier. And it's just, man, to get in was nuts. I had to, to get into the Ohio one. I had to beat pros at my club um, or at the qualifier that was at my club. And, yeah, so, like, it's just a weird thing that I never thought was really – it's almost like I didn't think that could be reality. And then when it was, and even when I went out to Ohio and played, even though I didn't post great scores, I was like, maybe I'm not that bad at golf. Yeah, yeah. I think you're good Wait, now. So- I think we can officially say like <laughs> yeah. Danny Woodhead, above average and, golfer. And, and I like the fact that you're just, you're going to keep grinding. And, I, you know, I, I'll put, I'd put my money on you someday being in the U.S. Open. I wouldn't, you know, betting against Danny Woodhead and like his – Will to I mean it's more accomplish. fun if you bet against me. No, but like then I hate you. No, <laughs> no I, just, I'll tell you something. No, seriously, like I, we we're very uh, we live in a very cynical time, and I think yeah. a lot of people are cynical about sports. Um, but I was like when when I saw that you were in this, I was like I was actually proud. I, it's a weird thing to say, but I was like, <laughs> damn, this is awesome. Now I do have one question though about yeah. your your uh, setup and like you, you know the last two days. Do you think the shorts might have hurt you a little bit? Because it is kind of like dress for the job you want uh, yeah. situation. I saw you that's out in the good, shorts. That's a good one. Yeah, your legs I, are obviously incredible. You know, well, that's I mean, just guy to guy. Uh, but the yeah, shorts. Yeah, and, and my butt. Yeah. I feel like I have some gifts there, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, definitely. Um, I would say I have a gift in my butt. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, too, with pants, I could have wore some pants that just showed it off a little. And even if they were baggy, it's big enough that it's still going to show it off. Really. Right. Yeah, you could have worn yoga pants. Right. That would have yeah. been something. Yeah. I oh just saw gosh, it. And how I was nails like, would that have been? Yeah. Me and, me and yoga pants just strutting around. But then the, <laughs> some Lululemon. Yeah, Danny oh Wood had gosh. sponsored by Lululemon. Wait, Wait, I, but, but I guarantee I'd be wearing a thong because you don't want any lines. <laughs> yeah. No. But you I don't. I did see it and I was like, I, I believe that he's here. He's very good at golf. He's right there. And then I saw the shorts and I was like, wait. I don't know. He's got. To, he's got to take that next step in his game where he feels comfortable golfing in pants because you know that once you get there, you have to wear pants. It might be a stupid rule. It is a stupid rule. It is a dumb rule. But yeah, I think you might be onto something. And I think there's a good chance. Say next qualifier I make, I'm wearing pants. Mm-hmm. I might go joggers route though. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's legal. Yep. But uh, I mean, my gift will be shown off either way. And I, <laughs> I mean. And, and in some ways, I don't know if it was a smart thing because I don't want, I shouldn't want people looking at me. 
No, don't apologize I'm, for I'm your ma- body. That's yeah. that's their problem. Yeah. Oh, it okay. would actually okay. be it would be awesome okay. too if you get, when you get to the U.S. Open and you're like, you know, you're, you're uh, popping and locking and popping on on when you go to pick up the ball <laughs> in your tee every time, just showing off the booty. That's how you get on TV. Yeah, you. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't put the tee in the ground like the. <laughs> The standard ones, like I'm like making sure I'm like way down. Yeah, like you're popping down. it. You're twerking on the tee box. Maybe wearing some heels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. really lifting. It's like, it's like that's super weird. Why does Wood Woodhead puts the tee in weird? He yeah, puts it in, in with his mouth. What is he doing? <laughs> what this is so this is so weird. The, the tee's in his mouth, and so is the ball. Like it doesn't make sense at all. Wait, so what were the? Can we talk about the four holes? Let's just break yeah. it down. So what yeah. happened? Because I saw so, you started on Monday. I think you were, what, minus one through five? Yeah. And it was like, ooh, this. we were following. We're like, uh-oh, this could happen. What were the well, four holes? And were they consecutive or they were just scattered? So, so on hole nine, I was even par going into hole nine. I will say, very tough hole. So this course, there's certain places if you hit it, you can be absolutely dead. Just dead. And I end up doubling it, um, and it just put it kind of put me in a tough spot, being two over going into hole ten. And hole ten, I end up bogey, and that one here that could have been whatever. Um, but it was just a it was just a tough um, it was just a tough few holes that I had. There were also a few like three holes later, I double when I hit a sand shot to three or four feet. And because of the greens, it was a spot you can't miss it in. I had to play it like two feet out to the left. And it's like a three or four footer. And I touched it and it rolled like seven, eight feet past. Damn. And then I, I mean, it was just the greens are absurd. And then I, I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be right edge. Hit it firm. And it doesn't break, but it broke a mile on the way down. Right. So right there, that's two strokes I lose. Because if, if I'm hitting it somewhere... And it's a four footer. Usually I'm making a four footer, but because of where it was, I was kind of dead. So that's two strokes right there. Two dumb strokes on the par three, which even if it was one stroke on the par three on that first par three, that that's, that's three strokes right away. It changes the whole dynamic of just how you're attacking um, the course. Um, And then I had a, I, I ended up the next time I played hole nine, that par three, I double it again, put it in the, bad spot and then i will say the the other one which i tripled so i had three du- doubles and a triple usually i don't play and have a double anyways period right well the triple in all fairness guys like i was hanging out eating lunch talking with my i was already it was after my first round mm-hmm. didn't stretch at all um first swing kind of a practice swing cracks my back and i'm like oh this could be sketch Take the full swing, pull it, put it in the trees. Just kind of dead nation. And the thing is, uh, I don't want to say it was, I was already plus seven, so it didn't matter because I don't want to be that guy. But it was, it was, I was just that one. I don't want to say as a wash, but I was hanging out with my boy uh, Nate Ebner. He was from yeah. Columbus, came yeah. up to watch me. So I'm like, why don't I hang with my guy? I don't need to get warmed up. I, I'd have to shoot a million under to get in, anyways. But then, uh, then I end up playing, and after that, I have a stretch of like four birdies and like six or seven holes, oh. playing pretty, playing, playing pretty decent, and giving myself other looks. Um, I will say the thing that I, looking back, I would have been a little bit more aggressive than conservative because this, the greens are very hard at that course at Springfield. I feel like um, if I was just a little more aggressive and said, whatever, I'm going to go shoot a low score probably would have i played a little bit more conservative than i should have yeah let's put it that way yeah and and i think that made it to where i was a little more defense like i was playing too much defense and i almost getting me in trouble you were trying to do the fairways and greens thing from from 10 cup as opposed to going for it yeah right right well I, i probably wouldn't quite 10 cup it but just being a little more aggressive because i hit the ball far enough and i have a good enough short game not saying I was going to shoot four under, but if I play good and I should be at least around even, um, if you do, if you just don't do a couple dumb things and and unfortunately, we, 
like I try not to, but at this course, like there's just the room for air is a little bit less. So if you're a PGA guy, your miss is probably not going to be quite as bad as my miss. Yeah, right. and if you're playing 36 holes, that's so much golf. Too much that's golf. That's way too much golf. <laughs> like, yeah, way, you know what the, the qualifier should be like, and it probably is, if you just complete 36 holes of golf, mm -hmm. then you qualify for the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, that's, the, that They need sucks. to change the rules. Yeah. They need to change the rules. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a legitimate thing. But, yeah, I don't know. I, f I felt it wasn't one of those things, and this is what's crazy, because I never thought this is how I would have felt, even though I didn't shoot like the score that I wanted to. I mean, I didn't feel out of place. Yeah, that's a big step. And it, yeah, yeah, and 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 that's the thing is like usually you'd probably feel out of place, right? I I didn't feel out of place. I just I made a couple dumb mistakes, and it's like okay, maybe next time I'm not. Uh, next time I won't do that, and um. And I'll play more aggressive than I than I did in the past. Because it's like, if you want to qualify, even though even if it's a hard course, you kind of have to go out and take it regardless. Because it's a one day tournament. It's right. not. I mean, yes, it's thirty six holes, but it's not four days. It's a one day tournament. If you want to qualify, you still have to go out and take it. Yeah. And yeah. and I don't think I had that attitude honestly until the second round. And I was just like, whatever, man. I'm gonna just go shoot a score. And that's when I started just birdieing holes, like because I was like, no, I'm I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not gonna do this like, oh, I'm only hitting it to right here. I'm hitting it. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the ball hard because when I hit it hard, I hit it straighter, and I'm gonna try to give myself birdie putts. And when I did that, weird yeah. things work again. Grip it mm -hmm. and rip it. I saw uh, yeah. Coach Belichick reached out to you, or at least he said something in the media. Yeah. He said that we're watch we're all watching Danny. We're pulling for Danny. That was cool that Bill Belichick still remembers you. Yeah, I mean, I'm a forgettable guy. I don't <laughs> no, know. No, for not. him, though, <laughs> you're not. you might be the most memorable guy for him. I think it's like, actually, <laughs> Ebner. He probably remembers Ebner. Yeah. yeah. He remembers uh, he, he you. Does. Like, guys that play other sports, Belichick gets yeah, interested. That, that, I, mean, yeah. I mean, that is true. And I will say it does. It is cool because the fact of the matter is I was only there three years. It's not like I was there for, like, seven years. But for him to kind of give a shout out, I mean, still kind of a, a cool deal. He remembers me enough. It's funny. I had a, one of their PR guys reach out to me and laugh because then I put something out there about how, oh, he remembers me. Let, I, I love you, Bill. And I said, hey, Bears, let Bill know because Bill doesn't have Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But his assistant, Bears, is like the freaking. He's the uh, guy. He's the protector of Twitter, social media of the team, and gets anything over to Bill that says, hey, Woodhead said this on Twitter the other day. Make sure to rip him out in the meeting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, hey, Woodhead said he talked about someone's contract. Make sure you tell him in the meeting that he that is the number one thing we don't do is talking about another player's contract. <laughs> so, like, I, I had to make sure Bears – um, knew about it. And the best part is everyone in New England knows exactly what I'm talking about when I'm like, hey, Bears. Yeah. This is <laughs> let him know because oh. he's like just creeping on social media. Oh, I've, I've heard about him before. He Yeah, he basically like prints up Twitter. He prints Twitter out and then hands yeah. it to Bill. And he's like, here's what he the gets on his desktop about. and then prints out the <laughs> all the tweets of the players and says, Bill, are these OK? It's almost <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, Bill watches film, right? But I don't think he sleeps a lot. So I think he has tons of files and papers that he has to go over. And I think half of it is probably a bunch of tweets from players to make sure it's acceptable. <laughs> what, uh, who was, did Phil Rivers hit you up? Please. You tell know me what? That. Philip didn't. Oh, oh no. That's messed up. Oh, Let no. Let the world know. And I, I think I might have to text him too. I think yeah, you tell do. him to come on part of my take as well. Yeah, um, I, 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 yeah I, I can, I can get that done and talk about his uh, coaching career now. Yeah, but no, he he didn't. But man, I'll tell you what, tons of people. It was kind of cool, kind of weird, kind of like, oh, my gosh, this is how my life used to be type stuff. Like just as far as like notoriety, um, as far as like I got some golfers that reach out to me saying congrats, that's sick, whatever, yada, yada, yada. I had former teammates um, and that's it's crazy. And then it, it's it's kind of weird because then you're going around and. I mean, people know who I am in Omaha, and they still sometimes will say, hey, how you doing, yada, yada, yada. 
Um, but after qualifying, like it obviously happened significantly more. And I was like, gosh, this is kind of exhausting. <laughs> like, and I, I said, I don't know if it was my wife or someone else. I was like, this is kind of, I guess, what it used to be like when I play. Because, I, I mean, you're playing for 10 years. And I was like, so I mean, I want to continue doing this and I want to continue playing and stuff. But I was like, this is exhausting. I'd have to get used to that again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I guess the next question is where do we go from here? Uh, I, I know that there's some very lucrative offers out there from the live tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, they could get you a lot of money, Danny. They, have, they haven't money. reached out to me. They haven't reached out. To we me. can make those connections. Billy is close with the um, with the royal family. Yeah. So. Oh, that doesn't shock me. <laughs> what number you know, would you do it for? What would you? Let's just. Let's just. Your. What's the price for your dignity? You know. Hey, the thing <laughs> that I learned, Big Cat. You never play your hand in negotiations. True. Just say, you never set. You yeah. never. You never set the ceiling. I, but it is funny to just conceptualize, and you know, there's a lot of discourse going on right now of like, yeah. So I don't what's know the every... number. Yeah, what's the number that is enough that you just never have to like listen to anyone else ever again? So it just doesn't matter. Wrong or right? Like some, there I, is a I've number. I haven't thought about it. Oh, everyone has a number. I mean, PFT, right. you have a number to play in the Live Golf Tour, also. Oh, everyone I, I definitely have a number. It's as close as you'll ever get to defining the term "fuck you" money. Right. That's what we're talking about here. <laughs> right. So, it's it's but, basically buying enough, having enough money that when everyone says you're a shitty person, you can be like, I don't care because I'm on a It's boat. like, well, did you yeah. did you not see what, did yeah. you not see my live contract? Right. And it's a horrible thing to say because we all like would like to be good people. But everyone, I think if you ask if you hit them with truth, has serum, a number. there is a number well, for the rest. And they have <laughs> to admit that for the rest of your life. Right. You can tell anybody scoreboard yeah right you just, you just point and you're like that's it that's my bank no, account but it's not even whatever it's, it's the number that you don't even have like those people who are like hey you're a bad person they don't even come they don't even come in your circle anymore they, yeah you they can't even get yeah. to you and and there, <laughs> no, there are some, because like, because you because you have that number yeah you have that number there's some it's valid like, uh, points sorry. too about like you know if, if you want to judge whatever corporation you're currently doing business with by the actions of their ceo like, do you take Ubers? Yeah. You know, like there, there's, I think the uh, Saudi royal family actually is the biggest investor in Uber yeah, as well. Probably. So like there's, there's like, <laughs> but there's I wouldn't even do that. Stuff, there's a lot yeah. of stuff that, that you can point fingers at. It's just like a little bit more explicit here. And now it seems like, I don't know, I, I would honestly, I, I'm fine with anybody doing it. It would break my heart. If Max Homa did it, yeah, it would break my heart. Yeah, no, there's definitely some people. Yeah, I don't I'd think be Max would. No, I don't I, think he, he would. He won't. Um, he's also uh, he's also half Jewish. I don't think they would want him. So um, did, did just he being reach factual did, here? Did he reach out to you? Just, <laughs> yeah. Who? Max? No. Oh yes, Max did. Yeah, no, that doesn't cool. surprise me. You guys yeah. seem like you'd become like instant best friends. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's awesome. Like, awesome, awesome dude. Um, I was fortunate enough when we went down to arizona over spring break my kids spring break uh he had me out and we played him him and uh joe scovron that's ricky fowler's caddy and had a great time like just regular dudes and mm. i mean it was fun it was it was a great time it didn't feel like i mean you just feel super normal right like whereas like if you're playing with some other guys on that are very famous you, it's like, oh gosh, is this going to be like weird or whatever? But it's, it was, even though he's like a top, top player in the world, he doesn't make you feel like that. He just, it's like you're a regular dude. I, I can't wait awesome. till, I can't wait till he wins the Masters and then just forgets all of us. I know. That's the only thing. <laughs> it's going to like, happen. <laughs> like Big Cat, PFT, Woodhead. Yeah. Oh, Who wait, are you guys? You know, oh, you need like, an autograph? We're like, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're like, hey, Congrats on the win. I yeah. love your green jacket. Who dis? Yeah. Huh? You know? Yeah, it gets green bubble. Sorry, you're going to have to. Yeah. Like, green jacket, like, green bubble. Yeah, That's how gonna, it goes. Yeah, you're going to have to talk to my uh, PR person if you want to set up an interview. Next thing you know, interview. I'm blocked. Yeah. My phone number's blocked. I'll send you it's an like, autograph hat. I think Max might be the only one that's immune to it, but I also, he is getting but it scares you. so good at golf now, and yeah. he is like the trajectory. I do, if you had to bet, if I had to bet right now, I'd put two, put two bets. Danny Woodhead will be in the U.S. Open at some point. Let's go. And Max Homa will be win a major. And, I, and I the bet thing both is, those. he's 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 having a child, 
My best years were after my kids. The bump. Yep. The bump. Yep. It's a fact. We studied yep. it this year in the NFL. You score a touchdown whenever you have a kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen to Big Cat's voice. Yeah. Better. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. It got better. Yeah. It's gotten worse. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I don't know if it, it translates in, po- in podcasting. It might be the one, the one uh, profession that's immune to the to the baby pump. Well, well, I think well, also well, not well, having kids well, makes you your... worse at podcasting too. I think just age. Yeah, yeah. Father Time uh, yeah. steals everything. It's oh, undefeated. It just it, it, it is undefeated, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, Big Cat, has your uh, pickup basketball game gotten better? I'm so, I can see you getting boards, dude. I'm tra- I'm I'm training now. Um, I'm literally just going to the gym, and I got a guy. It's called Swish House, so they have like classes. But I I basically have hired a guy who just runs me through drills because I'm I want I I want to start playing again. I stopped during yeah. COVID, but I also oh, know yeah. that if I just go right back into it, I'll just tear everything in my entire body. So it's a yeah. it's a slow ramp up. But it's I want a little climb. Yeah, right. And also, the best part is, I show up, and when I play pickup, I basically I can play two hours of pickup, and I can maybe take five shots because my job, I know my job. Do your job. It's yeah, to rebound, it's set picks, it's to I, you know get dirty down low, play some defense. I show up when I'm one on one, and I I get to shoot like three hundred threes, which I never would do in a game. So right, it's fun. But that's but that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's the climb. I can I can see. Uh the Miley Cyrus climb song in your ear pods. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be whatever ready. the U S open for uh basketball is <laughs> for, uh, for uh pickup basketball. It is very cool <laughs> that the, that the U S open does have that facet to Bro, it. Oh, like so cool. every, anyone can qualify. Well, the, the NFL needs to probably get something like that for like kickers, right? PFT agreed. Um, to where it's like <laughs> a bunch of guys try out. And the next thing you know, you have a guaranteed contract. Cause I mean, it'd be tough for, for the for the pod because then you'd be playing probably for i don't know the commanders and then it just that complicates things. we get our ratings would go down because who wants to have a washington commander on every week yeah like it would actually get uh, it would get less interest all they would be able to talk about is like oh the commanders lost to the giants nine to ten yeah ron rivera would have you shut down yeah i i think they should add one more wrinkle for the u.s open i love that anyone can like uh you know realistically get in they should have one spot though for like the everyman golfer where when you go to the qualifying you're 36 holes you shoot yeah. and every beer is a stroke off of your score so mm. we get like one just guy who's just fat and wasted into the u.s open and he can drink like that in but the u.s sol- open but a solid golfer yeah right he's a solid golfer so like, but he's also he a really good like- drinker he shoots like seventy seven. Right. I think what but Big he had talk twelve about, beers, yeah. so he shoots sixty five. Yes, exactly. You just mean like, John Daly. Yeah. You just want John Daly oh, in the US yeah. Open. Yeah. Which oh, I agree a hundred percent. What if, what if they did maybe that's what the live tour's doing. Oh, that'd be incredible. They're just like, All right, you shoot your score and then however many beers you have. Yeah. A bong rip counts as two strokes. And just yeah, guys are or, wasted at the end. Or, or, <laughs> or, or it's like or if it's an IPA, it's minus two. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? These it's are like, good oh rules. My. These God, are good you know what we should really like, do? We next should, thing you know, a guy shoots 59 every week. Yeah. We should do our version of the live tour where we ha- we implement these rules and then we get like exclusively marketed to John Daly to play. Right. And then be like, hey, John, this this is a sport that was invented for you. And it's funded by North Korea. You're, by Putin himself. Yeah. 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 Well, no, Write and us then, a check, Putin. And we'll then, figure it and out. And then you've got Putin <sighs> golf. Oh, oh, no, you've God. got Kim Jong-un golfing <laughs> and he's the... All time like record holder, he just right? Because he's winning every, every weekend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a it's lot like, of money involved in it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I had one last question for you, Danny. It's yeah. a rowback question. R h o b a c k dot com. Yes. Use code take for twenty percent off your first purchase. Rowback talking about golf has Q zips, hoodies, polos, the best in the biz. Uh, I know that the the uh, bet was stood for a long time for PFT. Are you, are we going to officially make it? That if you make a U.S. Open, PFT cuts his hair because it was. Oh, yeah. If you if you win a Super Bowl, PFT cuts his hair. I kind of like this wrinkle that it's still you, and it's just a new challenge. I I love that idea, and I don't know why. I don't know why we wouldn't make it that. Yeah, yeah. It it seems like it fits. It's perfect. Now I I said I got a little carried away when I saw how close you were. I said that I would shave every hair off my body. <laughs> you don't. You did get carried I, I away because if I would have had a good day, you would have been shaving. 
every hair on your which would have been kind of sick we'd be like oh my gosh it's a little spooky what's happening with this guy yeah but i would love it maybe that's if he makes the cut at I, the US I think open. if you make the hey. cut it's every yeah. hair if you make the u.s open i'll cut my hair into like okay i was regular I, length e either way it would be sick if you did sh shave every hair on your body and we also made you wear reading glasses <laughs> <laughs> With the, then I could host uh, the Scott Van Pelt show when yeah. you went on vacation. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, you would be. <laughs> I'll shave my head too, and we'll just do Bizarro World Scott Van Pelt. Yeah, oh. we got Stanford Stanford Steve. Steve. <laughs> it would be it would be out of control. Like you guys are always already like huge. Like it's cool that you guys still want to talk to me, right? But uh, stop it, well, you're, you're, you're you had to get you had to get close that. to the U.S. Open for us to want to call you. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but I mean, you guys would be making if you guys were both bald and had if you guys were hairless with reading glasses. I'll tell you what, <laughs> you guys would be live to her status money wise. Yeah, not 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 what's backing it. I'm just saying money wise. It would just so give another thing that Billy could like in, you know, behind people behind our back, like at the bar on the weekend. He's like, dude, they can't even see and they got no hair like their time is up. <laughs> How's, how's old Billy doing? He's Not doing good. Well. Doing right. yeah. No, he's fine. He's, he's doing fine. He's doing. He's doing. You know, perfectly average for Billy. Yeah, he's, he's thriving. He's actually been on a roll recently. So we've been we've been awarding him uh, emojis based on good behavior. Oh. It's like you know, I don't know if you have like charts that you use for your kids where you give them stickers every time they do yeah, a chore. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like a or a the like at school like they they do like a, a color chart. If you're on, uh, I don't know why red's bad. Maybe it's because it's like a stop sign. Yeah. You know, and green's like good and yellow's like, uh, oh, chill out, homie type stuff. But mm -hmm. you guys have a color. It's almost like a color chart, but yeah. it's an emoji chart. It's a, emojis. We give him emojis for uh, as rewards, as treats when he does something good because he's trying to go to the tight end university uh, oh, camp that they have over in Nashville, which really just means that Billy wants, wants to go, to go to Nashville yeah. and get drunk. Yeah. So um, we need to incentivize him. He needs to he needs to behave himself if he wants that type of privilege. Yes. You know, if he gets enough emoji days, maybe you guys like we'll take him out for an ice cream cone or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, they'll become real life stickers. Um. All right. Well, Danny, thank you. It's been too long, man. Hopefully, we cross paths at some point. And uh, yeah, do get us Philip Rivers, please. All right. Hey, sounds <laughs> good, fellas. Thanks for having me. Good seeing right, you, Danny. See ya. Danny Woodhead was brought to you by our friends over at Helix Sleep. Why would you buy a mattress that's made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Helix Sleep has a quiz. It just takes two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattresses that are great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz. I was matched with a Helix Midnight Luxe mattress because I wanted something that felt medium firm. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattress that comes right to your door. Ship for absolutely free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Nothing weirder than going to a mattress store and laying down on their little floor models and pretending like, oh, this is the position I sleep in. What about you? And then you got the weird salesperson looking over your shoulder. You don't want to have to go through that. Just go to helixsleep.com slash take. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they're going to match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, so you get to try it out for 100 nights, risk-free as well. They even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you're going to love it. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. And now they're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com. 200 bucks off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash take. All right, we're going to wrap up. We got Fire Fest of the week. Hank, if you have a Fire Fest, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be okay. very mad. All right. I won't. I won't then. No, go no, ahead. Go. Give it to I us. I know you've got it. It's more, it's more like let the record show. I got to try and find my original tweet. Um, I would say it was, I don't know, six or seven weeks ago, maybe less. I bought AirPods. And I said, how long till I lose them? And I lost them. Yeah. I don't know where they are. I mean, the clock starts on AirPods the second that you buy them. I lose AirPods like they're going out of business. <laughs>
Did you, know, you see who? Did you see the NBA? Who was the NBA player who tweeted? Was Josh Hart? Josh Hart was like, man, I I always lose these, and he had you know when you pull up your Bluetooth, it has all the old ones. He no joke had like thirty five AirPods just scattered. It was like Josh country. Hart's AirPods one, Josh Hart AirPod two. Oh like yeah, yeah, I did pods see that. like Beats three, like all these things. Very very, very funny. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so this is I put up a poll, uh, April eleventh. I purchased AirPods. This tweet will serve as bookmark for when I lose them. Place your bets. Less than a week, 4%. One week to three months, 48%. I was the winner of the poll. Three months to eight months, 39%. Eight plus months, 9%. So people people got me. Yeah. They got me read like a book. I mean, AirPods. Favorite one. AirPods, there's never been a more clear example of a product that was designed by a company specifically to so that them. people yeah. would lose them and then have to buy them again. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And the fact that you can't, if you lose the case, you can't just replace the case. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Sorry Thoughts for your AirPods. Thing. That's yeah. a shitty week. Tough week. Yeah, dude. I know. Real brutal. Uh, <laughs> PFT, know. your fire Hope fest. things turn around. Um, my fire fest, this is actually a pretty funny fire fest. So um, I've mentioned on the show a couple of times, I'm, I'm going down to the shore this summer, uh, have a house down there again. It's going to be a great time. And uh, part of going down there is we're, we're trying to, like, sponsor some of the things I'm going to be doing. For example, like, grilling out. Maybe we can get some Omaha steaks there. And um, You're getting free stuff. Yeah. And, nice plug. And yeah. yeah. And one of our, one of our uh, favorite companies in the world, Chevy, is going to be giving me the Silverado that Billy and I <laughs> and Bubba drove across the country on our way to, to the Super Bowl. So um, we're going to get it wrapped was the idea. And I wanted to put, I wanted to turn the Silverado into the Silver Shark. Mm -hmm. Like put, put like gills on the side and have like fins and teeth and shit going over the grill. Um, <laughs> so turns out, <laughs> what? what I, I, I've, I, I actually don't, I think I know where you're going with this. I actually don't know though. Yeah. So um, it, it's great. It's awesome that, that Barstool and Chevy are going to uh, help me out with this. And so we submitted the designs to get it wrapped. It looks like it's going to be awesome. And um, then they got back to me earlier this week and they said, hey, just so you know, uh, I don't know when you need to have this truck down at the shore. I'm planning on taking it down there like at the very, very end of the month. Um, but they're like, hey, uh, we're, we're going to need for it to be wrapped uh, for out and about in the Barstool Gay Pride uh -huh. wrap. And I need to take the truck down to move my stuff in before they're going to be able to get it wrapped as the shark. Love it. And knowing how I just am reluctant to do anything that requires work, I'm probably just going to end up driving the Gay Pride Barstool Silverado around Jersey Shore all summer you long. You should. And you should. I, <laughs> so Yeah, what are you, a Tampa Bay Rays player? Yeah, yeah. Dude, come on. <laughs> am I bigot? Am I yeah. a bigot for wanting the shark? Um, yeah, it, yeah, I think you should. It's going to be a look. Yeah, if that ends up happening, you got to lean into it. I think I might have to just lean into it. Yeah, hot boy summer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can probably get into some good conversations. Yeah, no, you know, it's, yeah, stopping the truck and, and everything. And you know what? It's probably a good way to not have conversation with somebody. Like if somebody would go out of their way or um, like yeah. hate on that. Yeah, you're weeding out. I'm the weeding don't out. Want to I'm with. weeding out the bad hangs. Yeah, yeah. So I might just be driving a, a, a gay pride truck around. For the entire summer, which yeah. is which is fine. Like we say, love is love. Probably not going to get that live money now, though, which is tough. Um, but we can we can evaluate that when the time comes. Yeah, yeah. The the live money. Yeah, you might have to be excluded from it. Yeah. I think you. I think it's a good. I think you got to drive the truck. I yeah. love the truck. What's it's like wearing the ribbon? Yeah, exactly. You gotta do it. You got to wear the ribbon. I will. Um. All right, my fire fest is. It also, I just has Joey and Pat's face on the truck. I believe. Beautiful. I've seen. Have you seen the designs? I've seen. I have not. No. That That's will funny. be very, very S funny. Send it over to me because I'd like to see what <laughs> what I could potentially be run, rolling around in. Because I, I could delay and get the truck wrapped in the shark, which looks awesome. I love the shark idea. but You should get the shark rainbow. But there are some yeah. things that get I want to get shark. down there for right at the beginning that I'm going to need the truck for. So it's like, what do I want to do? Do I want to like schedule another time to take the truck all the way back to New nope. Jersey, get it rewrapped, and then pick it up? Or am I just going to be like... You're trying to see... Yeah, because then you're also kind of low-key silencing yeah. the gay truck. LGT... <laughs> right. LGT... B... Q... P... F... T. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> just throw it all in there. I bet you if you tweet that, people, someone will be like, fucking how many letters are there now? Yeah. <laughs> Plus. Bullshit. Yeah. I just uh, sent it. <laughs> I want to see a picture of it. 
I send to both of you. Okay, uh, I'm looking as well. Um, my fire fest is. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm looking at it. Oh, that's a perfect truck. You have to keep it. <laughs> proud it. Proud AF. Out and about. <laughs> proud AF. Yes. You're proud AF on the top. Dude, you have to keep that. Wait, they should just I'll put you as. Mad they should you put you as the third picture in the in the thing, just so people know it's your car. Yeah, I'd be mad if you don't. You have to. I'm gonna. That. I, I'm gonna. Yeah, that's awesome. Tell, yeah, I do want my face on there if it's going to be like Pat and Joey. Or maybe I'll put somebody else's face on there. <laughs> the ma'am shirts. That's going to be great. That is going to be great. <laughs> um, all right. I, my fire fest is obviously uh, the Warriors future is dead. I, I truly believe that. So um, I have a new future that I'm, I'm putting in that people are going to be very upset about. Um, Hank, you're, you might actually be upset about it, but it's going to be fun. It is... I'm, I don't know why I'm just feeling it this year. It's Subway Series. I'm putting in Subway Series future. The, I'd be down for that. The Mets and the Yankees to meet in the World Series. I think it's 14 to 1. Um, if you're a Mets or Yankee fan, sorry. But I, when I said it, I, who was mad? Oh, Bubba was mad at me because he was like, fuck that. That would be brutal. But I just want to see it in this office and the chaos that ensues. So one down or a million down because the Warriors were not the first future I ever lost. But... Uh, we're on to the next one. I'm already Stop on to the next one. You've been doing this all show. I I, I know what you're doing. Like, I don't. You guys both are doing it. I'm not doing anything. You just decided the series. It's two to one. The Celtics are better. I know. Hank, we're right. actually they we're, are. We're they actually are not better. doing anything. Yeah, we're actually we being. Tr- we being truly honest. believe this. You have won the series already. I'm not. I don't think the Warriors can do it. I really don't. Do you have a parade outfit picked out? Are you going to wear the pants? No, I don't have the pants with me. Do you need a truck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should keep that that truck forever. Just have it oh, be what? that truck. I w- I almost wish the truck was a little gayer. <laughs> yeah, like it's almost like yeah, it needs a little bit more, a little more flair to a disco it. Disco yeah. ball or something. What are you gonna uh, say? Truck nuts. Truck, truck nuts. nuts. <laughs> I sh- I, good point. I should put the truck nuts Rainbow on there. Rainbow truck nuts. Yeah. yeah, that'd be awesome. We've talked about it before, but obviously we were just talking about how many like championship runs the Boston's gone on and New York just doesn't do anything. Like I being living here in New York, like I would rather like the Rangers having the Rangers people be excited about the Rangers like is fun. Like yeah. if it was a subway series, like it would just be like a, I, yeah, I'm a thinking, fun time to be in New York and I would just root for the Mets. I'm thinking of it just purely from an entertainment. Like Frank the Tank beating the Yankees would Correct. be the greatest story of all time. Or Frank, yeah, it'd just, be great. Just the buzz of the office oh, every day be awesome. would yeah. be incredible. And like the Cubs suck. So it's like I'm not even rooting for either team, so to speak. I'm just rooting for them to meet in the World Series and see what happens. I, I would not mind seeing the Mets in the World Series. I feel like they, even though they're uh, – you know, technically a rival of the Nationals. When you have a shitty baseball team, you kind of just throw everything out the window. Yeah, you. I'm, and you're like, are it's a free. It's a yeah. free roll though this it's year, where it's like yeah. for me, like the Cubs suck. So what would be the most entertaining uh, World Series? I think seeing seeing Frank the Tank in the World Series and trying to figure out like why how he can be pessimistic about his team if they're winning the World Series. Mm-hmm. That's going to be worth the price yeah. of admission. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bill, you're fire fest. This one's pretty infuriating. Um, so I was playing basketball Tuesday night with Soli. Shout out to Soli. Shout out to Soli. We were there for like two and a half hours. Just the two of you? or uh, like No, the... no. We were playing full court with a bunch of dudes. Outside? Outside. Okay. It was like one of the first times I played pickup since the pandemic. And it was sick to get back into it. So we were like playing hard. We were gassed. Like I was totally beat up after it. Um, what's your What's your game like, Billy? How would you compare your game to a modern NBA player? Um... I mean, my sh- like it was my first time shooting a lot, so I was just more inside, just getting Dr- boards. Draymond Green with less offense. Like Robert Williams without being six ten. Yeah, without dunking. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I hit some clutch shots, but my shot just wasn't really landing. Yes, uh, that day. So anyway, so I'm coming back. So I ordered Chipotle um, on my way back. So hopefully, when I get home, it's there. So I order it. I'm walking back. Then as soon as I order it through DoorDash. It goes delivered already. And I'm like, what? So anyway, I'm like, that's weird. Like, did it not go through? So I check. I paid for it. I get home. I'm waiting. It's definitely not coming. So I get on the phone with DoorDash. They give me the run around for like 30 minutes. It's getting late. It's like 9.30, 9.45. And so basically, they took my money. I have no food. 
and I don't keep food in my fridge because I've been traveling recently. So it's getting late. Everything's closing. So basically, I'm hungry as fuck. I didn't get my food, and they took my money, and I'm pissed. Did you go to so, bed without is, without dinner? Eating, no, yeah. I had to. I went to the deli. That was. Oh, I basically ate an ice cream dinner because that was the only option. I noticed that you're a little bit swollen now. Chipotle, yeah. fix this. Chipotle, I'm fix pissed. I'm a lawyer. I'm guac mode verified, and you took my double protein rewards points. <laughs> fix it. I want him to have a free gift card. I, Monday. Yeah, I, I want, want. I want the black card for Billy. I yeah. want my points back. I want my money back because yep. I have tons of. Chipotle fix points. Fix I'm a it. loyal customer, and I think DoorDash stole my burrito. I don't know what happened, but I called. They gave me the runaround. There's, they kept asking me for my order number, which doesn't exist anywhere on my order confirmations. Mm-hmm. I'm fix pissed. It. I'm a loyal Chipotle. Wait, so customer. Did, it sounds like you might not have ordered. No, yeah, it no, took my didn't. money. I took my money. It's like uh, my Chase card shows that I was charged for my burrito. So I'm pissed. Now you're broke. Yep. There's nothing worse than getting the runaround. Fire yeah. Fest. Yeah. But yeah. And no burrito. Justice for Billy. All right, Jake, finish us off. Yeah. So we were in Albany last week and we were told to go to this like classic sandwich place and we were in the parking lot of the sandwich place and Billy's like, there's no seats. I want to sit. I'm tired from getting my butt kicked by memes on the cross field. And Billy's oh like, let's just go to TGI Fridays. I'm like, we are not going to TGI Fridays. Dukes and memes just stayed silent, and Billy's like, "Turn the car around. We're going no. to Fridays. No. Oh, we no. go to Fridays, and it ends how you'd expect." So, Jake, why? Yeah. Tell, tell oh, you no. diarrhea again? No. Not diarrhea, but no. Jake, why, Jake, oh, well. why did I you can't not tell if that was Jake, Jake or Billy Friday. talking there? <laughs> yeah. It was Friday. It was Friday. Everyone, so like, you oh, have to go to TGI no, Fridays. Sick. Friday. Yeah. sick. Memes and Dukes went in Rome. Yeah. Memes and Dukes <laughs> were like, "Yo, TGI Fridays," and they were all down. They didn't say a word. Well, they. Memes, how how Me- down were you and Me- how down was Dukes? <laughs> Memes don't have a mic right they, now. They were down. They were down. So anyway. Thumbs we, up or lie. thumbs down? We were in the. Lie. No, everyone was down. Memes, Memes will back this up. We were down to sit, but we were at the sandwich spot. Just the like, sandwich spot was a deli and like it probably wouldn't be a great place, but we'd been out in the sun for like five hours. It was so 90 degrees. Sit. I wanted so to you're sit. Diva Billy. I wanted to sit He's in a Diva booth. Billy. No, no. I wanted to sit in a booth and just get like unlimited water refills because we were all dehydrated. Everyone else else was the same vibe. So everyone was vibing for TGI Fridays. When we got to TGI Fridays, it was Friday. Like I will, yeah, I yeah, will say no, that. He, was, he said that. There was yeah. all the deals. Jake started. Oh, there were all the deals. <laughs> Jake what, started. What kind of deal is like? Uh, was that five dollar Long Island iced tea night by any chance? No, we weren't drinking. We were driving. Um, so we were walking. I, in. That's a lie. So <laughs> that you can always tell when there's a bigger lie when Billy puts a small lie out mm-hmm. there. Well, we couldn't. <laughs> start, it was like it's a Russian, lunch. Russian no, everybody dolls of lies. Everybody was but, driving at the time, so no one could drink. Yeah. All right, that's no. that's not true. So what really we, happened? As we a collective, we're driving. <laughs> anyway, so me, so we, like it was Dukes was driving. If it wasn't the group consensus, the driver wouldn't have drove us to TGI Fridays. The vibes were high, and then when true. Jake got in there. Jake got in there. Jake was just like getting angry at the other customers for just what? existing. Jake was like, "Oh, what? look at this place. Oh, oh, this is disgusting." I was like, "He's trying to throw J- me under the bus." J- for getting Jake's mad looking at other at, customers. Jake's looking at Yelp reviews and being like, "Oh, they, it's just reheated everything. It's disgusting food." So I talked to one of the guys coming out of the store. I'm like, "Yo, did you have a good meal there?" And he goes, "Yeah, it was great." I was like, "Okay, like fuck Yelp. This guy says it was good." So we go in and we had a great time. We got wing. Uh, wings. We got like really good sodas, and it was Friday. Oh, really <laughs> good sodas, nice. Unlimited refills. It was, and good, it was good. It was mix. just like it was good Friday. It was just like at that point in time, like. it was great. At yeah, that they sat point, us at a dirty yeah. table, made us get up because they said, "Oh, the table wasn't dirty. a dirty table." They just All right, had can, to can clean I, it. Can I butt in real quick? Jake, it sounds like you're being a little bit elitist towards TGI Friday. Exactly. <laughs> it's not my spot. Mm-hmm. I'll just yeah. say that. I, I do think that like if you were going to like a really well known deli, you should do that. Right. Like, if you're yeah, in, a different in the parking city, lot for it. You should try. I, a I agree with that. If if Billy's whole thing was I want to go someplace where I can sit down, first of all, that's code for Billy being like tables I want to go up to a place that has cocktails and beer. Right. <laughs> Just be honest, Billy. Wait, like, so this you is, didn't want to go to the great no, deli because think, they didn't serve beer. I actually, no, that was <laughs> I think it's actually a, the rare case where both of you uh it was like Billy's diva was passed to Jake's diva. So you both are divas. It was bit you. Be, it's transitive diva property. Mm-hmm. So that gets yeah. that. Does that does that come back to you guys as the parents? 
No, they were they were we weren't involved with them that day. So that's <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you can't only so much you can do. They were at summer camp. Like was, Ted Bundy had a mom. <laughs> it's not her fault. <laughs> there was some low key heat stroke vibes coming out. What does that mean? That means I was Expand like you that. guys are basically in the desert. No, sounds like I mean expanding mean, low key heat stroke, stroke vibe. We had no like water. Scientific. We had to play Albany is hot this time of year. They don't have. They, they didn't have degrees. water at the lacrosse practice. They didn't have of the major league. Lac- no, so that's they a huge, had a cooler in the field. You realize you could just said it was hot out. It that's was a huge story, story if heat true. Stroke vibes. I mean, that Premier Lacrosse League is not providing water to their players. No, no, because we got moved off the main field because they had to paint some lines. So we were on the side field that had no waters. And like it was so hot. Like memes, I need some backup here. Thank we you were, for your service, Billy. Yeah, we were playing for hard. This. How we, on a scale of one to ten, how hungover were you? I was so lost his voice. You can see that in PMTV. I yeah. wasn't <laughs> hungover. I was, dude. This is this anyway. Okay. I just need. I wanted to sit down and get like cold ice water just refilled so I could chug it. It was that was the vibe. They didn't have bottles of water at the deli. No, but they like, did. Dude, how terrible. <laughs> they had be? tables and chairs. No. Oh, no, no, no. How booth. famous of a deli. Oh, it's wait, not that wait you could have sat? That's yeah, not that's true. Sat. Oh, he just wanted okay, to the next oh, day. Yeah. I got All right, now it's, wasn't involved. You guys are fully, yeah. B- the, Billy, you were being a diva, so no. was Jake, but oh, demanding a booth, a specifically a booth. <sighs> but just like, imagine being so, so hot and just and having endless to sit in a chair. ice water yeah. in a, and sitting in a booth after being like, you're getting your ass like beat with a giant metal stick by memes. That's a sentence. Yeah. I mean, Put I'm still... Big quote most, board for that. Love yeah. is love again. Yeah. We have the guy part yeah. of my quote. That would be a good one. Yes, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, good job. Numbers. 18. Six, 69 on June 9th, which the day is currently. Just to keep Hank humble, he still has not gotten it. Uh, 26. I'm going to go 27. Or no, 20... Did 26 get taken? Yeah. It's, oh, 20, no, no. 26, 27, 29 are available. All right, 26. Three for memes. Evan? If there is a God, 11. 69 will hit What did you say, Hank? 18. Banner 18. Six for Bubba. 69. 69 on 69 day. What do we got? Oh, is it going to go up? Yep. Oh. 60, 56. 56. I feel like that's twice in a couple weeks. Yeah. Second time. How? How? When was the other time? The debut. August 27th, 2020. Oh, that was the first Pretty ball much, ever? Yeah. First in a well, we weeks. did like ten that day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love you guys. Orangutans regularly take hostages for food.